Hey, what's up, everyone? To Handsome Crab Gamer Plus Three. Uh, that's what <laughs> that's what we're renaming the show. <laughs> I didn't get a big pop on that. That's okay. Uh, my jokes are kind of lame, but uh, you know what? We do have uh, a good show. There's actually cool topics because we did get some interesting breaking news today, and um, you know, at the same time. Uh, we, we also ha- are going to miss a couple panel members today, but I think the Don is going to come in a little bit late to uh, kind of fill the void or whatever. And and that's that's pretty kick-ass of him. Uh, but let me introduce uh, Mooch. He's tired, but he's here. What's up, Mooch? I'm always here, buddy. Don't forget uh, Xbox Nation Wednesdays. Can't miss it. No, a lot of news broke today. That's good. I'm, well, let's see. I, you're saying news. I am going through the topics, but some of it's rumor. But I think it, it yeah. it's got it's got a lot I mean, of water. It holds water. It holds water. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's I mean that's what we do. What what else can you do on these type of shows if you don't talk about? Right, you know, isn't that you know, funny? When people are always like, "What are you doing talking about that so much?" Like, what do you what would you like us yeah. to do for seven hours a week? Yeah, exactly. Or <laughs> seven. Talk about it. Probably, 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 probably ten. Now, yeah, yeah, probably ten. Yeah, it's, it's crazy with the amount of uh, a podcast. Yet last week it was even more. Oh, we did. You did five yeah. in a row. I did four yeah. in a row. Wow. Yeah, because because I did Great. next, and also I have BGST. But hey, man, it's still like it, it's still a good time, and I enjoy it. Uh, hopefully, Absolutely. everybody else enjoys it. Hit that like button early and often. Share it out, all that kind of stuff. Let's get started so we can get rolling. Salty, what's up, my friend? I see you you grinding away too, man. Putting out them videos as well. How's oh, it yeah. going? Hey, it's going good, man. Uh, today's a better day. Let's put it that way. It's been pretty slow with the news, but. You know, I woke up, got that juicy story, put it out, had some good comments. I'm excited to get into topics. I'm drinking so much caffeine that I have to have a defibrillator right here, you know, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so great. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. And making his triumphant return in a guesting role. Boom, boom, kaboom, noob, noob, come in the room. That's going on. Right. <laughs> if you guys are hoping for rumors and speculation, you've came to the right place. It is Xbox Nation. Noof Nukem is in the room. Glad to be here, guys. Thanks for the invite. Look, we may not have a full panel, but we got four of the coolest cats that you're going to find in the podcast you can game. We're ready to roll, so hang on to your pantyhose. Let's rock. Hell yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was going to say something. For no chills, but not yeah, yet. Yeah, it did. Not I was yet. just like, oh, you know, calm down just a little bit. Okay, so you know what? Hey, we might as well start. The Don's going to be here soon he was driving home he forgot that he was gonna be on um you know on the show so yeah he was like oh, i'm gonna be a little bit late but hey he is gonna Those be west coasters and that slipping of the memory it is man oh. it's true it's true so uh <laughs> you know what i want to kind of start off talking about something because i would love to get mooches and everybody's take on this uh the ign stuff with the plagiarism uh review so there was a if you guys aren't aware uh this guy named boomstick gaming on youtube uh he has a a relatively small gaming channel and he was doing a review for an indie game called dead cells and he did this review and then ign did their dead cells review where the guy basically verbatim took this 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 small gaming youtubers uh review and used the words verbatim for his ign review really and wild. so the guy this boomstick gaming does a side by side and he plays you know a few seconds of, yeah. of his and then a few and it's like the same thing so ign pulls down their review and they they apologized. They fired the guy. And here's the thing, right? Then they play the victim a bit, which leaves me scratching my head. They're like, we work hard. A lot of not all of us do that. We and that's fair enough, right? But the victim stuff, like, oh well, you know, not everybody does it. Well, here's the problem that I have with this. And then I'll I'll go around the panel. For me personally, I already look at a lot of these big sites as being shady as hell, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we don't trust them. Too much A button, too much water, this, that. Perfect 10 for, for a game like, um, you know, uh, for a game like Uncharted 3, which was no perfect 10. Uh, a little bit ridiculous. And not only that, I, I think the biggest difference between this and anything else is the fact that IGN is the biggest professional site. And you have to keep that in mind, professional, right? So you're not talking about a small site here. You're talking about a large professional site just stealing from a youtuber and the funny part about that is youtube realistically this actually leads credence to the fact that youtubers are actually killing these kind of media sites by doing a better job and so basically what this means is this small youtuber did such a better job on this review for this game that a professional paid at ign took his review and used it as his own and they wonder why 
that YouTube is killing these type of sites off completely. Um, I already didn't trust any of these sites. I realize it's not everybody and one, uh, you know, one person doesn't, but, and I, and I, and I, I equate this to sports, right? <laughs> everybody knows I don't like the Patriots. They've been caught cheating multiple times. When you get caught cheating, that's not always the, the only times you've cheated. That's the times that you've got caught. There's probably plenty of times where you've gotten away with it, you know? So you have to wonder how, how deep does this go? This guy apparently had done this before. I'm sure not everybody's doing it, but it is a little bit ridiculous. And uh, for them to try to play a little bit victim of it here, I, I'm not sure I buy it. I'm sure people are still going to go there. But at the same time, I think it throws even more a cog into the trust situation. So, yeah, uh, I, think, I think you're right, crap. Here's the, here's the biggest problem I got with it. First and foremost, everybody on this panel's done one. Doing a game review, if you're a gamer, like it's not that hard. Um, first of all, it should Especially be it's not an indie game. I well, mean, the, yeah, but well, before we get into the complexity of it, let's just talk about. I don't care if we're talking about something as, as complex as as Final San Final Fantasy 15, God of War, or something like Dead Cells. My my point being is that. When I do a review, I, I do them very sparsely. You know, you guys yeah. do them way more often than I do. But I do them on on the games that I think have depth. I think the ones that the, the public has this ridiculous interest in. And I also have this unbelievable interest and passion for. And the fact that this guy's going to go and, and, and plagiarize somebody who I on, on Twitter at the time had like 600 followers on Twitter. I don't know how many. I heard he had like 10,000 subs on YouTube before. Yeah, now now he's, now he's over gonna thirty thousand. Yeah, now he's getting but, some some but, some play, and that's but the that's point of the matter is, but it's easy to do a review, you know, and, and, yeah. and it's it's not a difficult thing to do, and it should be something you want to do, right? So I don't. I, well, if you're getting paid to do it, first well, here's of all, what I've said all the time, yeah. though, crap. What do I say about IGN, right? And I don't know if you guys watched, but um, what was her name there? Alana recently mm. left IGN and she did a, uh, a post up follow up show on her YouTube channel that basically went over why she left IGN, which yep. was no ill will. And then yeah. she did a show afterwards saying where she went to go work. And what she said when she went to go work, she's going to work for Funhouse, Roof, but yeah, roots her teeth, right? Or whatever that is, but when right? she's going to work for them, my whole point being was she said the issue she found at IGN was people were going more to Funhouse and YouTube YouTubers. Uh, and, and IGN was having a hard time struggling to get people, and they were just kind of reaching for clicks. And this is the stuff we've been saying for years. It was just Alana's not going to come out. She's not going to say anything like in terms that are you know uh, hurting IGN or hurts hurts that company. And I don't blame her. She's a very professional. She's one of my favorites at IGN of all time. Yeah. I, it was really sad to see her leave because she did a genuine job on reviews, and she did it. Like, like the way a journalist should do it. I was so interested to hear what she said when she did her reviews. And that's my point. And that's why I miss the great Adam Sessler. Adam Sessler did reviews from the heart, the stomach. You should hear the video. And I've mentioned I haven't mentioned it in a while now, crap. But I really used to get into it because I watched a few videos that Adam did where he said how he actually prepped to do a review. He would tell his better half that he's not going to be able to, you know, he said to his wife, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like just not available for two or three days. And he would play the game for eight to 10 hours a day for three to four days, depending on the complexity of the game. He would have all kinds of protein snacks and water, like gallons of water. And he would hone in on the game and write notes as he went through. And then he put them all together, collaborated this amazing review. This is why I do YouTube. This is why I enjoy it. This is truly a passion. It's something I like. Uh, yes, I have a, pre a preference. You know, everyone says, oh, you can't have a preference. You have to love everything. Of They're course you can have shit, a preference. Right? Get out of here. Of course you can. Yeah, of course. But my point being is that that's where this all stemmed from for me personally. So when I saw this happen yesterday, I sit there and I say, bravo to Boomstick uh, uh, Gaming uh, yeah. and that gentleman. Because you know what? What he did when you listen to him, listen to the way he said it, and it sounds like he's speaking from the heart, from the stomach. And when you listen to the guy who plagiarized them, you could tell it was off a script. So, yeah. And like you say, it really is detrimental to big gaming sites because, to be honest with you, the public has already known this for a long time, and now it's just exposed. Hey, and, and shout out to Idle Sloth. Uh, he's a big fan of our shows and stuff. He, he actually got a tweet from this guy who reviewed it and he tweeted out his response to him him plagiarizing was if you steal from one author it's plagiarism if you steal from many it's research right so i mean that's kind of a whole hum kind of attitude to have towards it yeah, in my opinion yeah. and so you know at least have a little bit of remorse for it or whatever you know like i said 
right. the difference between this and something else, right? Like uh, anything else, they're a huge site. They're the biggest gaming site that you can find. And to, to see this kind of level of, of something going on just goes to show you that shady practices. And you know what, Mooch? We get a lot of crap, right, mm -hmm. for people saying, oh, you guys lay off the media bias, media favoritism stuff. It yeah. gets old. Yeah. And nothing's been proven. Right. And despite the fact that people still say that, you have stuff yeah. like this come up. Right. And so you have proof that, hey, this stuff does happen, and now it's been proven that uh you know it's it's absolutely ridiculous so well, that's it's my whole thing that you know i my joke always was when uh you know originally what was her name there was your your favorite girl that left the fix there oh uh, uh, naomi kyle naomi kyle left and before that was jessica chobot and it always just seems like they're always like who's next behind the camera who is it jimmy exactly. jimmy come over here it's your turn uh, what do you mean it's my turn i came here for producers <laughs> doesn't matter come here you're now the host of the fix and it's like it, okay it, it's always who's next in line, and it's not necessarily yeah. who's the talent. But go ahead, Newf and, and Salt. Yeah, well, I'm just going to say it sure would be nice to see IGN um, get a little stability over there because they've gone through a lot of staff for a variety of reasons, obviously, over the last six months to a year. And it's pretty damn bad when pretty much the two faces of that whole organization is freaking Brian Altown and the other twit that's always with them. Yeah. I mean, uh, those two guys, uh, you know, I, I don't even think I'd throw shit at those two guys. I'd rather say save it for something else uh but i mean yeah i mean as far as this whole situation it's it's a terrible thing and anybody in journalism knows that plagiarizing is stress especially you know word from word uh where it's completely so obvious it, it's terrible i mean i would have loved to have been a fly on the wall after this was found out and go into the ign offices and you know and see what the, the head people had to say to this guy as they let him go because you know, what, what can you, I mean, IGN, as you said, has already struggled the last few years to find validity and, and they're losing credibility, it seems like, by the minute. And then this guy goes out and does this. I mean, I definitely don't blame him for getting rid of the guy because it's it's terrible. It's just, uh, you know, and what was he thinking, right? I mean, maybe yeah, was, you'd maybe have to, and, and his snide, you know, yeah, his snide, his snide way of responding to it was crazy. And apparently he played and beat the game because oh. that's their requirement, right? Is IGN said, "Hey, they're required to play through the game and beat it uh, before they can review it, and they have to record the footage or whatever." So, uh, you know, for professionals, that's what they get paid for. So it is a little bit concerning. Maybe he thought just because it was an indie game, maybe it wasn't worth it. I don't know. So I, uh, I think it's yeah. a lot concerning. Obviously, yeah. if you look at IGN, it's like the representation of media with gaming. So when they start doing bad, it kind of looks bad on gaming. But uh, have you ever eaten shredded wheat before? You know, frosted shredded wheat. Sure. You kind of yeah. You get you get the full size ones at the beginning of the bag. They're good. Your cereal is nice, and then you get to the bottom. It's like all the smash shit. You know, what I'm saying you don't want to pour it in your bowl necessarily. I love to pour that in my bowl, man. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> except for crap. Yeah, but I know. I'm weird, right? <laughs> at the bottom of the barrel is what they call it. Is what's happening to IGN yeah. at this point? You know, they. Uh, uh, they started off, I don't know what they're doing there, uh, but obviously they're losing the cream of the crop, right? Talent's fleeting out, and then they're pulling out random people, probably not doing as much background, probably not as stringent when they're they're hiring these people, and it's showing. They're starting to show, like, situations arise on Twitter, you know, with certain memes that are put out, and they're like, oh, that doesn't represent us, and then this situation comes out, and then they, they have to, you know, put apologies out. It's crazy. Any video that IGN puts out now, the first 20 comments are like, did you really make this video? Did you copy yeah. this video? Did yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, it's like, how do you go to bat with your company when it comes to credibility when this stuff's happening and it all trickles down to how you're running your company? I made an interesting poll on my uh, Twitter. I said, is plagiarism bad or nah? And uh, I got 52% that said yes. And then I said uh, the other option was IGN sucks. And that's at 48. I, I, I was thinking that was going to be better, but uh, I guess not. But yeah. you just give them two bad options, basically. Hey, uh, Don! Don! Uh, his ship the Republican. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? Don, how, how do you feel about um, this, this situation? I mean, you're a developer. Uh, how, how do you feel about this kind of thing? And I've openly spoken about big media outlets, how I'm not impressed with them. Um, yeah. I, I, I want them to go back to the basics. I want them to go back to yes. the who, what, when, where, and why. Can, can right. I just, can I just get that? Just, just stick with that for now. 
Yep. Right. Yeah. And get some credibility. <clears throat> you know, you have years ahead of you building up credibility that you've lost. And I, you know, IGN has lost credibility credibility to me even last gen, right? Like yeah. they were playing off the clicks. I, I start seeing at the end of the generation, I'm like, huh. They're not just giving you the who, what, when, and where, and why. They're just sensationalizing like whatever negative thing that's going wrong with what a particular platform that was fun to hate on at the time. And they, Xbox. And they, well, before it was PlayStation, and like yeah. and one of the early people, on, early yeah, on. Though. Yeah, but one of the few few people will admit that they did pick a lot on PlayStation instead of just telling like, hey, you know what, save files kind of suck right now. Maybe wait a couple months. You know, like you know, PlayStation had issues the whole entire PlayStation 3 generation, but instead of just listing the facts of what's going on, they, they would just make it into a big deal, right? And the reason why they make it into a big deal is it stirs people up, it makes people comment in the comment section below. If you have comments in the comment section below, then that gets tagged, and then, and then people go to that article over and over and over again, and if you can show how many times that someone an article is being clicked on, then, then you can show that to an advertiser, right? Yeah, and then so you can make money off of it, and then it went into overdrive when when the Xbox One's launch, and and they they took advantage of that, and they're not informed people. That's the problem. They they not really are. They don't really relate to their customers. They don't. And this is my thing: is like their customer is my customer, so I'm not cool with them treating my customer like they don't know any better. Like I'm not okay with that. And so this is just another example of it. Um, and I'm sure it's not the last time we'll see it. Well, here's the thing, Don. The reason they're having a real... Now IGN's got an uphill battle. Yes, currently, because you've got every casual and every uh, individual that's just coming into gaming knows IGN's the news media outlet. But just like anything else, you know, everybody... You go back to the 1990s. Everybody was watching NBC for news. Now people are going to YouTube for news. People are going to some of these really small, obscure channels for news on cable. And the thing with IGN is, uh, I think Greg Miller was actually the the sinking board that was removed that had the ship going down. Once people saw that you could take your talent and bring it somewhere else and your own channel and make your own money, that's what happened with Greg. That's what happened that's with like Colin. Alana. Alana actually. did the same thing. Yeah, and that's what yeah, I'm saying. Because, it, because she, she even said uh, IGN would not let her do Let's Plays on her own channel, right? She wasn't allowed to do it which I thought was kind of ridiculous. So, well, um, I don't know if it's ridiculous crap. I mean, they have to have something to keep you. If you like the personality, okay. If you like the personality and you're maybe some people, you hear, see some people in the chat. They're like, Oh my God, I thought Alana was great. This and that. If Alana is now doing let's plays on her own channel and she's doing all this gaming news and related in information on her own channel, well, she's basically taking it all from IGN. But hold on, so though, she's got a hundred and some thousand subs. IGN's got 15 million. I don't think she's really any threat. Of taking, it's, it's you, you know, say that crap, but you take her hundred and something, you take Greg Miller's eight hundred and fifty thousand, yeah. it adds up. You know what I mean? When all it's of them start to do their own thing at the end of the right. day, yeah. It'd I mean, like, I don't know. It'd be like you working for a convenience store and selling shit on the side. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I hear what exactly. you're saying, but but check this out. She's still like where she's at now with rooster teeth, right? Um, she's got she's got the ability to also do her own thing still, right? Like how crippling mm -hmm. must that be? And trust me, I, I felt it too, right? Like there comes a point where, you, I mean, you you just want to have fun when it comes to gaming and talking about games. And even for me, like I talk to Mooch about this sometimes where I'm like, I lost that somewhere during along the way. And I yeah. talked to him recently about that. I'm like, at some point, I just like, it just seems like you're not, it's not okay to, to bring stuff up. And we'll talk about this, like the Spider-Man thing, right? Which we'll yeah. probably talk about in a little bit, right? That game everybody's just like, Oh, like <laughs> they love it. You know, it's, it's great. And you know, me and Mooch kind of mocked that a little bit. I think it's going to be a good game, right. but at the end of the day, I brought up some valid points and nobody's been able to really counter the points that what is this game going to do to make it that much better. And that like, people are saying it's going to be better than God of war and better than red dead two. And it's the game of our millennium and the generation and all. And I'm like, it looks like a Spider-Man game to me, folks. Right. Yeah. And it's like you get hate. You I, I you get called salty or you get called and I'm like, I'm I'm buying the game. How am I salty? 
right? Like I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't understand that. So it's like you're not allowed to have any criticism, particularly well, towards the PS4 thing. games. Not just you crap, but even the media. Yeah, the media yeah. does it too. Like even though, and I read it, I have it actually still right here from Last Crossfire. I have the interview with Jonathan Dornbush and Andrew Goldfarb from IGN. And Andrew Goldfarb actually expresses literally nine minutes into the interview. He says, I, I, and I'm paraphrasing now, I have it quoted here, that he felt that the game gets repetitious within two hours. Yeah. And he goes, now that doesn't mean it's, it's going to be like that the rest of the game. But he goes, if I'm two and a half hours in and I haven't done much since I've leveled up last in two hours, he goes, I feel like the action. And I said this, I said this month ago, month, month and a half ago. I said, I said, I feel like. Yes, the animations are amazing in the game. And don't get me wrong, Insomniac is still one of my favorite uh, uh, developers this generation. But it looks awfully, awfully repetitive and awfully, awfully quick. Familiar. Yeah, like, yeah, like aside from it being graphically better, which it should be. Given Absolutely. The developer, it looks great. Yeah, what a what right. else? I know, right? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to say it because yeah. people, like, you know, they flip out. But it's like, for me personally... I hold my tongue on a lot of things lately, and I don't like to do that, right? Things are slow. Yeah, If I'm not able to speak my mind and have fun and just be able to be honest about how I feel about things, and it's not a hot take. That's how I don't see how that's a hot take, to be honest with you, that the no. game looks like Spider-Man. If you look at some of the early previews, they're like, it's Spider-Man. It sure is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that it's like it's gotten to the point where if you have any kind of critiques, you're salty or a fanboy or Correct. this or, or well, toxic. Well, what I, I think... What I think is weird is that we're talking about judging our interests on a game before a game's even out. So none of us played it, right? Yeah. Uh, the ones that are pro, the ones that are kind of iffy to the ones that are, you know, I'm not interested. You know, all you guys are talking about is your interest in the game, how excited yeah. about you are in the game, and you're sharing that with other individuals. Why can't that be a common middle ground where we just share our interest in, yeah. you know, we realize that we're at different different places on that. The the real the real problem here is a society problem, especially social media. That's right. The thing yeah. is, in this world that we live in, this PC society, and this will trigger a lot of people, but I, I don't really care. Um, the fact of the matter is, is people feel like if you don't feel the same way that they feel in every area of your life, and even the popular opinion. You'll be cast out. You'll be left aside. You won't be in their group. You can't be right. friends. And that's right. the issue. It, that the is thing is, is, that's just the not, that's the problem. The plain and it simple, is the problem. you know, because yeah. like, let's be honest, we're all human beings. We're not some cyborgs walking down the street that are programmed the same way. And that's, that's the right. problem with society. It's not just gaming. Okay. It's not, right. it's, it's. You have to be afraid of what you say, every little thing that you're going to trigger someone. And that's the problem because what's the point? You know, like if I don't like Spider Man, I should be able to say it and not get attacked by uh, a big old crew of people on, on, on Twitter. And that's exactly what happened when I talked about. Uh, Detroit became human. I gave an opinion and then just hordes yeah. of, of people. Yeah, here's the thing. So I'll be like, you, you know? I, I saw your opinion on Detroit, which was. Um, it didn't do particularly well, right? They're saying 1.5 million players, which isn't necessarily 1.5 million sales, by the way, yeah, according yeah. to everybody. So, yeah. and they gave a 20 million hour game time or whatever, right? So that's not incredibly great as far as I'm concerned, even though I thought the game was great, right? So I, I can agree with you that that is kind of sad yeah. that a game that's, that's that good and people talked about and hyped up didn't really sell well, you know? And when you see people talking about, um spider-man and all i personally said i did a video was like maybe back off the hype and the game of the year talk on spider-man wait till it comes right. out and then we'll see um and if you look at it people are like it's gonna sell 20 million copies and i'm like you know like the last six spider-man games combined didn't sell 20 million copies what, like but what does 20 million copies have to do with your enjoyment of the game exactly like and i don't does, i have no idea. Have anything to do with that like the only people that care about that is somiac and sony yeah like so I, I, <laughs> I, I personally hope it's a good game. I honestly do. Uh, hold on, let me pay some bills real quick. I only care about the new Spider-Man game if it stars Tobey Maguire, then and <laughs> only then. Hey, man, look, I agree, man. I know I'll probably get some hate for this, but Tobey, for life, those first two Spider-Man movies well, were great. You know, Kevin Kendall in the chat, he oh. says, you, if you criticize a game before you play, you lose credibility. Kevin, listen, I don't know how old you are, man, but... How do you lose we've been, credibility? We've, we've been playing games yeah. for a very long time. That doesn't mean that the the opinion on the show is spot on, 
but you you do have to sometimes have you ever gone to the doctor and i don't know if you guys seen the seinfeld episode when george goes there and he's like i got a white discoloration thing on my upper lip and he's like you think it's you think it's cancer and he goes no he goes it could be he goes well you're a doctor aren't you supposed to know and the point of the matter is like he didn't know but he's a doctor is he supposed to know no but he said it could be point being is like if you have a game that you've played right that was a great episode yeah if you've had a game that you've played and you see this game. We've all played a million Spider-Man. It's not a lie if you believe it. Right? It's not a lie if you believe it. So, oh, sorry, I just another thought, yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, but like, <laughs> my whole point is, like, we've played a million Spider-Man games. To sit here and say, if you haven't played it, you can't actually give your opinion on it, especially in the essence of a Spider-Man game. Yeah. It really, that's ridiculous. But that's you're, ridiculous. Well, and again, your yeah. opinion is just your interest in the game. Yeah. Like, like, well, like that's what, and people keep leaving that out of the equation. That That's the most important part of the equation. When we talk about products before they're launched, we we're talking about our interest in the product based upon what they have illustrated, what they have shown us, what gameplay demos, whatever it may be. That is what it's about. Right. Now, our views and our opinions change once we get a chance to play a product. And, you know, an honest gamer will, you know, admit when they're wrong. And then sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll be honest and say, I thought it was going to be great, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I mean, you look at what was the zombie game state of decay that Mooch was super excited about. And then he played yeah. it. Well, his opinion changed. Right. And yeah. then it's based on great actual example, experience. Don. Yeah. And I was yeah. amped for that game. That's, that's very yeah. true. Yeah. You guys want to know my take on it. Here's the deal, right? There has there really there's been a lot of decent Spider-Mans, but there hasn't been a lot of great Spider-Man games. And that's not I take nothing away from Beanox, who I think did what they could with the length of time they had to put together a majority of their games. A lot of them were rushed to get it out towards like a movie product and stuff like that. And the biggest problem, I think, if you look back at all the old Spider-Man games, a lot of the problems wasn't that they didn't get the swinging down or that you didn't necessarily feel like Spider-Man. It was just that the games came out swinging, like you know, pardon the pun, and then halfway through. <laughs> through you kind of got bored because you felt like you were doing a lot of the same quests again a lot of the enemies felt very repetitious now the difference here it is insomniac who definitely Definitely look from all the videos I've seen. I put a lot of love, blood, sweat, and tears into this title, and there's a lot riding on it. Again, it is exclusive for Sony's platform. I think if it was exclusive for Xbox, we'd be excited too. And I'm happy for people that are excited. Is it going to blow the world away? Is it going to be game of the year? I don't know if it'd go that far. I can guarantee it's going to be good. Is it going to be great? We'll just have to wait and see. It's going to be but great. I mean, it looks like it's got great mechanics. Uh, the swinging looks like it's some of the most fluid mechanics. I mean, the city looks better than I've ever seen, like a, a city in a Spider-Man game uh, and, and a variety of different things. But right. I mean, um, you know, we just got to see where this goes. And the thing that irks me the most, okay, this is the part that really gets my jib, is the fact that it is Insomniac and they've got credibility, right? But here's the deal. Like I said, when Ratchet and Clank came out, Everybody's like, Insomniac's amazing. They can't do it all wrong. This game is, in, is insane. Sunset Overdrive comes out for the Xbox, and all of a sudden it's like, well, who the hell wants to buy that crappy-ass game? Insomniac is all washed up. Well, guess what? Insomniac is now making Spider-Man, and guess where we're at again? Oh, Insomniac is back, baby. They're amazing. They're one of the best devs ever. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, a you know? miss studio, like, so, if, to be honest with you. Like, they have use. some really... They have really good games. Yeah, what is that? Was that the EA published game? Yeah, that was the one? EA published game Fuse. Uh, that, people, that was not good. Yeah, that not only that, but I, I hate to point this out too because I like the new Ratchet and Clank that they did, mm -hmm. but the previous ones that they had worked on um, for the PS3, some of those are pure crap. I, I hate to say it, but they were, and nobody cared about those. And games. Nobody cared much for Resistance games either. Let's be honest. Okay. Yeah, which I I like. Here's the thing: I liked Resistance one. Like I th Resistance one didn't have a campaign. Resistance two and three did, and they were pretty good. Um, the fact is, though, PlayStation gamers didn't support the games. Uh, <laughs> so so I thought there. If you look at them though, Mooch, like they scored really really well. Nobody bought them though. Right. You know. Uh, right. No no nobody really supported them. So that was a little bit unfortunate. Yeah. The th the thing to me is this, right? I'm an Xbox and a PlayStation fan. Me and Mooch, the funny thing is when people are like, oh, you guys are just salty about it. And then I look over, me and Mooch both have the PS4 Pro pre-ordered. Yeah. That, and I also have the collector's edition um, of the game pre-ordered. Are you keeping so, both of those crap? I meant they have uh, I don't. I got a little bit of time to decide. I'm not sure yeah. exactly. I mean, uh, my, you know, the thing about it, like, everyone has to understand. So first of all, we do the show for entertainment. So you guys have fun with it. We like to have fun with it. 
But in all in all honesty, like Spider Man's gonna be a very good game. Okay, for, we just said that's the and you heard the Don say it. Whether it's hit or miss, maybe it's hit or miss on ratings and meta. But realistically, Insomniac makes great games. This game's gonna be very good. But the they're, point of the matter is, you like can't. Gearbox. But they're, just after after a lot of exactly ways. exactly yeah, like the, Gearbox has good games and they have bad games, right? Aliens, Colonial Marines, well, right? Where yeah, but, it turns out they they messed up and uh, put uh, tether. Or something like that, a teether or something. And it was one wrong word that made the enemies act stupid or whatever. Well, I I like I like Gearbox. Gearbox did uh, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong. Did Borderlands, right? But you yeah. have to admit, even though I'm a huge Borderlands fan, at the same time, I will say that when you get six seven hours in the Borderlands, it gets a little repetitive. And it was the writing that kept you in it. But when it comes to Spider Man, it's not the writing that's going to keep you in it. Because if you listen to uh, Andrew Goldfarb, he says they do an okay job. But the Peter Parker lifestyle that they, they they chose to do as far as the Peter and Spider-Man, that combo was good. But, you know, him talking to Aunt May, how many times are we going to talk to Aunt May? How many times are we going to talk to his, his uh, you know, camp counselor or student counselor in, 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 in school? Like, it gets really boring. So that the, the, forget, you're not going to get enthralled with the story. And then after about three, four hours of pressing square or X, whatever the button they deem could be our trigger, whatever it is, when you actually are swinging around, and you're going to get your 800th collectible, you're going to go, you know, maybe Mooch was kind of right. You know, four or five hours in, great game. Game looks great. Yeah. Right? Does it look great or does it look great? <laughs> it looks great. It's great. I mean, it's great. You can't, right. you can't really say. Here's right. the thing. I'm going to give but the game another play. The, you're not going to, like, lose your mind. Like, I remember playing yeah. through God of War, and as I progressed, the game got better and better and yeah. better. And better. Dude, you I'm know like, what's well, funny about God of War? It grabbed me right from the beginning. Where like it's it's I'll just the stranger fight is right at the beginning. You know what I mean? Like what like that? Uh, and, I, and I was drawn in. I liked that game, and I was like for real. So it always surprises me, yeah. especially when I go. You know what? God of War, Uncharted are two of my favorite franchises. Not even just PlayStation, just two of my favorites. All together, yeah. right? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure who Von Lamont. Von, I don't know who you're talking about, but I, I don't. There's nothing at all that I would say. For I just said, Insomniac's one of my favorite developers this generation. Yeah, I'm buying not only the game, but I'm buying the Spider-Man console. Yeah, uh, and I'm going to be playing it day one. So if me that's too. if that's if that's me rooting for it to fail. Boy, am I doing a bad job. <laughs> hey, hit, hit that like button over 520 yeah. watching. Appreciate it. Uh, see if we can't get yeah. to let, 150, let 200 or something. Yeah. Mooch and Crap have actually given Sony a lot more money than most of you self-proclaimed Sony fanboys have given them. That's a fact. So don't pitch yeah. these guys. Yeah. They just speak their mind and they give opinions. It's not all hate like you guys think it is. Hey. And I just got one thing to say, <laughs> Crap. Go ahead, you off. But I'm just curious because I don't know. I thought well, this is funny. I'm going to the Xbox store. I don't know if anybody noticed, but all the Spider-Man games are missing from the xbox store now which is really weird like I, I don't i guess it's got something to do with the licensing agreement activision doesn't have the have the license anymore so you can't really? get them like if you get the physical versions they all went up in price like amazing spider-man 2 is kind of expensive to get on xbox one and it wasn't really a good game um the last spider-man game that i actually bought just to show people that um you know it's not just it's not salty or whatever uh was one for the 360 Right, I think I bought one of the ones on 360. Yeah. So even I mean, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, even that one's down. Yeah, uh, which I already had those, uh, thankfully, and they're you know what I mean. Uh, I bought those, but yeah, their Activision's uh, license went up uh, with those, so that that was a bit unfortunate uh, for me personally. I think hey, it's cool. I think the game's going to be good, but everybody that was like that game's going to be a 96 uh, Metacritic. You know, uh, ninety-eight Metacritic. It's gonna, it's gonna sell more copies than Grand Theft Auto Five and Red Dead Two uh, combined. Like well, that's, that's how people were sounding. It was, it was, it was asinine. Well, that's that's when you start doing more harm than good at that point, right? Because you haven't played it, you're judging your interest in what you're really doing is you're overhyping something, and then once you get a chance to play it, and if it doesn't meet those expectations, you you may not enjoy the game as much. But if your expectations were in check, you may have got more enjoyment out of the out of the product. So, you know that's you know with certain games when people get a little out of control, like that's it has a negative effect on me personally. When I play something, I'm like, it's not that it's good, but it's not what everyone's making it out to be, right? Yeah. So, yeah. here's the thing: it's like be excited, but have fun. Like, go buy the product, right? Go and enjoy yourself, but but don't pull these cards like you think it's going to beat this game or that game or it just no one knows like yeah. like let's let's just be genuine about it and you know hope it does well and hope it meets the expectations of i'm sure you know here's here, here's the thing right like the people and this is not um 
Uh, this is not a, a knock on Xbox or anybody that's excited for this game because I know plenty that are. But if you're if you've got a Spider Man tattoo and <laughs> you thought every Spider Man movie was great. And great. it's your favorite comic book growing up, and and you loved all the other Spider Man games. Guess what? You're gonna like this game and think right. it's great. You right. are just because that's know. listen. There's people. There's people out there, Don, that don't like Godfather Three. I'm on 100 percent Italian. I, I still liked it. But, but like, here's the thing. Great. There, there's yeah. people that are it wasn't Star Wars great. fans, but they don't hate, they don't like every Star Wars movie made, right? Yeah, that so, damn Last like, Jedi. Well, you say that, Dom, but they still went to the theater eight times to make sure they didn't like it. I saw it but once I there, but um, but that's what I'm saying is like, so it's okay to criticize something you enjoy yes. or yes. some or franchise that you like, as far as that's concerned, um, and it's okay to have concerns, and as long as you articulate, like you're not just purely hating on something to hate on something, right? right. Yeah. You, you articulate like Mooch, you know, makes a joke out of swinging on the left, swinging the right, and punch kick or whatever. But <laughs> but he's concerned about the repetitiveness. Now all yeah. games are repetitive, obviously. All right? games are repetitive, but how but how quickly they begin to re repeat. That, the and question. that's the key. Like a great game, you never notice it gets repetitive when you're playing it. But a mediocre game to a bad game, you notice it sooner or and sooner, right? So. Mm -hmm that that's where it comes right down to it. And then if it becomes repetitive and then also that repetitiveness is not no longer fun, um, then, then that's a real issue. So, you know, they have to make it f fun to play. So I, I don't think it gets a pass. I think it's fair to be cr criticized the game. I don't see anything wrong with, with that. I mean, hell, I mean, I wouldn't want anyone giving the pass to my game. I want people to be critical, yeah. um, but I want them to be articulate too and why they're critical as far well, as that goes, you, you know, you know what's a good a good example of this, uh, Don was I played a, a Wolverine game, X Men Origins Wolverine on the 360, and that game technically was good, it, and but then it got super repetitive, right? And I never actually got to beat it. But at first, you're like, hey, this isn't bad because you know how most like superhero games are really bad, right? The ones that are made after movies. This one was pretty good. But then it got really, really kind of repetitive. And I think that, you know, Spider Man's going to be good for those that think it is. Uh, Chaz says, Where's the Harmon fans hyping a game, whether it's Destiny, see if these are Spider Man? So what? I think that it's okay to be excited for a game. But yeah. I think um, probably going out there and saying it's going to be the game of our existence and uh, game of the year and sell 20 million. I don't know. I mean, that's hey. a, a bit maybe overhyping it, in my opinion. You, you know um, what's funny, though? Uh, someone in the chat said, because I don't own a PS4, I can't comment on anything PlayStation. It's funny, <laughs> though. It's funny. Because you know what's weird? Uh, when people, YouTubers, watch you know previews for movies, they give their opinions on it. Hell, there's a lot of people that have PlayStations, and they're giving their opinions on all these games that aren't out, but I don't own the PlayStation, so I'll just shut my mouth. You right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what it goes. That, that, that goes to say, that's what I've been saying for years. You know, people are like, don't knock it till you try it. Now, don't get yeah. me wrong, right? There's something to that in the essence where I think one out of every, maybe you know, realistically, if you're buying every game that comes out or you're playing every game that comes out as a reviewer, you know, one out of every 20 games, you may be like, wow, this really caught me off guard. That's if you're doing all of them. If you're a casual, it's probably one out of every hundred or maybe yeah. one out of every 200 that you'll go, wow, you know, when you like a game and you don't. And I know that I'm going to like Spider-Man. You know how I know I'm going to like Spider-Man? I liked the other 12 Spider-Man games. I didn't love any of them. And that's yeah. the thing. And everyone's sitting here. And, and every single conversation I've had on podcasts or on Twitter where someone's like, Mooch, it's unfair for you to say that. How do you know you're not going to love it? I'm like, how many Spider-Man comics do you own? They're like, 477. And I'm like, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> of course you own 477 <laughs> Spider-Man comics and you have a tattoo on your forehead of them. Yeah, like, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I just, it, 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 it baffles me that those are the ones that are saying it's going to be great. Great. I'm saying it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah I think great. I think it's going to be good too. I think it's going to be pretty damn good. It yeah. looks, and at the very least, it's going to be some eye candy because we all love Absolutely. that 1440p. Yes. So <laughs> I, I know I'm excited about that. Yes. Um, you know, I want to get into the Microsoft Studio thing in a minute, but first I wanted to talk about the this marketing thing that kind of surprised me yesterday. They the NBA 2K series, which is obviously a huge deal, yeah. um, had been with Sony. For a long time, and in fact, that like the last NBA 2K, 2K18 sold was their best selling ever at over 10 million copies. Now all of a sudden, the new uh, trailer comes out, and Microsoft has two NBA 2K19 bundles and is marketing this game 
Uh, wow, mind blown because we said, hey, they need to start doing some more marketing deals. And so I know a lot of people are like, marketing deals don't really matter, but I still think they matter. Uh, I think yeah. that Microsoft has a little bit more money now, and I think we're starting to see it. And I think that that's something that's kind We've of surprised me. What for you? four years, crap. We've been saying, yeah. guys, you got to do, listen, does it really truly matter? Let's be honest. If you have a PS4 and you enjoy 2K18, you're going to buy 2K19 on the PS4. My point being, though, is it's all brand recognition. OK, when NBA does an unbelievable job of advertising that product, 2K does it all the way through the basketball season. And when you see at the end, it goes boom and it's the Xbox one logo. And you see that over the course of two, three NBA seasons. So hopefully they have 19, 20, 21. You usually they do them in twos or threes. And then that puts the brand with Xbox. It puts the NBA with Xbox. The NFL has been with Xbox. Xbox, you see Microsoft tablets and Surface tablets all along the sidelines. Coaches are using them during the NFL games. So my point being here is it's brand recognition. Listen, even if somebody goes, Mook, you're full of it. If I go, hey, what kind of soda can you buy in McDonald's? They're going to go Coca-Cola. Like They know it's not Pepsi because that's Coke is with McDonald's and Burger King's Pepsi. That's just the way it is. It's brand recognition. Does it mean it makes you like one brand over the other? No. But you know the brand, it's signature, and that's the big deal. You know, and you say, where do you buy Jordans? Oh, those are Nikes. You gotta go to the Nike outlet, right? Like all of a sudden, why are those two paired together? It's harmony. And that's what Microsoft wasn't, whether they didn't have the budget for it or what the reason was, that really was a, a, a detrimental thing for them this generation with the fact that they had only the B minus, okay, marketing rights. And to see this crap, I'm not gonna lie to you. When I saw your video and other videos come out, I did a double take because when I saw the NBA 2K19 come out and I saw that Xbox at the end, I'm like, whoa, yeah, maybe they hey, really are. Hey, They're hey. opening all the purse yeah. strings. Go ahead. Sorry. sorry. I, can, I can actually talk on this because I bought NBA 2K last yes. uh, last year. So uh, okay, I want to go in basically on Twitter. I saw this and I did a double take. I was like, what the hell is this 2K? You know, because right. I knew they didn't have the marketing rights. So I'm like, how is this possible? The only thing that I would say that they need to do with these bundles is they need to have special editions, kind of like the Spider-Man one. Yeah, because right. when you just have these bundles, which you get a game, which is good, people want that 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 hot looking, you know, good looking console yeah. so they can have, you know, motivation to go out and buy it. Like they had some, you know, contests that they were giving away. I think it was like a Jordan branded console and everybody yeah. and their mom wanted that. Imagine if they did right. something like that with the X or the S people would be snapping them up. Like it's going out of business because let's be honest. That's like for me, for example, like the Spider-Man bundle, it's enticing to me because of the way it looks. So I think that yeah. Xbox, I don't know why they don't do it. Like, do you guys know what, the situation I, there like i why don't are we okay more? so so what happens salty is they've got to plan these the the custom consoles in advance like well in advance from what i understand so me and mooch interviewed uh greg duncan the head of rare and we asked him about it he's like yeah uh you know you have to really plan those well out in advance it's one of those yeah. things that you know kind of happens and, and realistically microsoft will only want to do that on a game that they really believe in was basically what we got from that. Right. So if they don't really believe in the game or think that it could do well or, or push units, then I don't think they'd do it. Um, and I don't think they had, I think it's a little bit costly too. And I didn't think, I don't think that they had the cash uh, or the budget to do that prior. And now I think they're actually starting to come around and see that because you see everybody hyping up that God of War one that was ugly as hell, but people still did. Uh, this Spider-Man, like Salty, you're interested in the Spider-Man one. Are you getting that? Uh, more than likely, I might. So okay, so then you'll be able to finally be able to talk about PS4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get hey. to talk about PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, look, um, they work. We might get a custom bundle for Forza Horizon Four because that is a proven franchise for Microsoft, and I think that that was one of the ones that kind of leaked that they might talk about. I agree with you though; those custom consoles yeah. sell. They've been giving them away. The the ones that should be custom, like that Shadow of War one, looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Um. They could do something for PUBG and make it custom looking. I think that would do really well. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, people like that kind of stuff. I remember last gen, uh, I was a big Xbox 360 fan, right? Um, and they came out with so many different 360s. And you know what? I bought a lot of them. Yeah. You know, I bought a, a ton of them. Um, I know, you, I don't know who else here did, but I had 
uh i had a halo one a gears one a star wars one right like you right. as a collector you want to collect these things like and i know i'm not the only one because a lot of people really want after some of these so uh yes and guy in the chat the god of war uh playstation 4 pro was ugly it yeah. was heinous. Yeah, it was pretty it, bad. Uh, it looked like uh, it looked it looked like a bunch of colors just. I'm threw actually up. Ex I'm actually excited because <laughs> I've, I'm going to have the battle. Uh, what is it? Battlefront uh, two, Star Wars Battlefront two one, and then all the Spider Man one, and the Battlefront yeah. two one I can bring back up. That's all black and it's got like a nice shiny metallic top. It's neat. Like I I do think that sometimes, and you guys know I'm not a the reason I'm not a custom console guy is I just have always set up ever since you know being 21 and up. I've always set an entertainment center up where, yeah, you may see the lights on things like your equalizer, this, that, blah, blah, blah yeah. your tuner. But like, I don't, you'll never see the equipment equipment. So for me, I've always had that mask to the side because I always like, that's kind of why I like Apple too, is I like no, like, I don't like no wires, no lines, all, everything curved. I like it neat and clean. So for me personally, always having the console up front and center. Well, I mean, some people like it. Some people don't, you know, myself personally, I like to just have a controller on the coffee table and a floating TV. To me, that's like the future. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I always felt that way as a kid, and now we're there. So it's great. But uh, it's great, it's great, it's great. <laughs> yeah. great. Um, well, but but you know what? The one thing, and, and, you know, and shout out to Mighty Spidey who called in on on uh, he calls in every week on MNC. You know, the one the reason I've started to look at the custom consoles, depending on the game and the console itself, is the value. Uh, I do think that there's a tremendous value. And you see the way people are losing their minds over Spider-Man. Like the Spider-Man console, the PS4 Pro, if you're looking like in Salty's position where he's looking to buy in or if you're looking to upgrade, now's the time if your store has any in your local area to grab it because this is something when the PS5 comes out, this console will probably get you anywhere from $50, $75 to $100 more probably on Craigslist eBay than if you just have a PS4 Pro regular matte black finish. So... You know, these are the things you got to kind of look at. Ultimately, it's a great deal right now, but I, I do get it, crap. You had like all of those different consoles in the 360 era. Those I didn't do. I just had, believe it or not, I had the um, I had the black uh, 360. I believe it was the Elite, they called it. I believe it was the Elite. Uh, yeah. And it was 120 gig hard drive, yeah. and, and, and that was the one I had in period. And I had the white one before that, and once <laughs> that one came out, it was over. And yeah. that was it. I rolled that right into the one. But I, I, I'm not dismissing people who like custom consoles. But I think you should look at your custom console more for value than having that candy apple red thing on your on your right. you know entertainment center. I think yeah. I a, like I like them all from a custom console level. <laughs> yeah. I think what it does it keeps the brand relevant to a certain degree, right? Like, yeah, you know, brings attention yeah. back to the brand. Um, and so that's that's where I see the value of it. Like, I never, I'm, I'm a plain playing console guy, my personally myself. Um, you know, I I even took the Scorpio logo off my 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 Scorpio edition Xbox. Oh uh, Don, Don. Come on. <laughs> I Man. was that guy. But regardless though, it brings attention to the brand, right? And people yeah. talk about it and it keeps it, you know, relevant in the ether where people can discuss these and, and share share their interests that you know about it's kind of like what the custom controllers have done right it's kept them relevant to a point where it's maybe a little ridiculous but you know <laughs> <laughs> you think yeah just a <laughs> little just a little well I, I had to buy a bigger salad bowl for my for my dining room table let's say that <laughs> I, I personally but, think the next logical step though for microsoft and i could definitely see this coming it, it is going to cost them a lot more in manufacturing but do what they're doing right now with the uh, with the custom controllers, uh, you know, with the design lab, and that's have a design lab option for for say the console where uh, they have licensed products, and you can basically pick one out off the shelf, or maybe even put something in with with a design on it, like put your gamer tag or something on there. And I mean, they would make a fortune. And the crazy thing is, uh, there's a large hardcore market out there, like a lot of people on this panel that, that not only have one console, but are more than willing to buy two, three four or maybe even more i mean you look at guys like tim dog who's got you know four or five consoles through his house and uh you know hardcore guys if, if they can get the console they want their favorite sports team their favorite movie on there uh people people go for it people eat that up and i think they're just leaving a lot of money on the table it's i mean you, you don't have to change the innards you're just changing the plastic on the outside so if if they ever came up with that i think i, I think they're gonna i mean you're gonna pay more for it there's no question but how many of you guys i, I would easily pay an extra hundred if I had to to get a custom console that I really wanted that could set aside my Xbox from anybody else out there 
Uh, you know what? Like, well, I I don't see why they don't do this, right? Okay. Um, they do the custom controllers where you can have them customized, right? Why? And those are a little bit more expensive, right? Why you could do that with the Xboxes as well, right? Have them customize that for an extra sixty, hundred bucks, there's whatever. I'm sure a lot of there's less pieces to the new hardware from the S and the X, right? Like it's made exactly. of less less panels. So I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Yeah, exactly. Hey, by the way, I am trying to mooch Madden in the chat. So if you guys want to, uh, feel free. M O H spacecraft gamer on Xbox Live. It's it's a rough time. I'm a humble, simple guy, a uh, man of little means. Um, <laughs> I've heard that before, Crap. <laughs> no, I know, right? I'm trying to. I'm much little or means than Zaire, yeah. man. Trust me. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. You know, I, I love the game, and I, and I, and and if if I can't mooch it, I'll probably have to just pony up and buy it. But you know, like sometimes those those crapaholics will wake up from the, their slumber and be like, "I'm going to do something nice for the man himself." You know what I mean? And, and and they do that. So yes, surprisingly good stuff that they actually have this game uh, marketed for Xbox, and they got some bundles. Get some custom consoles out there now. On to these reports of Microsoft and Obsidian Entertainment. Uh, apparently, there's a letter of intent uh, that came out and kind of leaked. We've heard that Microsoft was not, in fact, done buying um the uh the first party studios uh this makes a lot of sense for multiple reasons which we'll probably get into a little bit later including amazon and google and things like that kind of trying to get their hat thrown into the the ring um and, and we'd heard from different people that microsoft themselves have told multiple people they aren't done purchasing studios very interesting because obsidian is one that i called well before e3 and i said you know that could be one because they do rpgs and a certain kind of thing, and they're familiar with Xbox and PC, and, and we all know PC is Xbox, Xbox is PC. Uh, they kind of like that situation. They've done some um, some work on the X already. I think they're about to release a new game. They've done KOTOR 2, South Park, Stick of Truth. Um, uh, they've, they've done a ton of games, you know, and I, I think it'd be very smart uh, pickup from Microsoft, so I'm very curious to see what you guys think about this. Well, hello. I mean, yeah. I mean, Obsidian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I I think it's I think it's a good move. I think it's a good move. But I don't think it's great, but I think it's good. <laughs> um, you know, it's I, true. <laughs> because, well, you know, the reason I say that is is that they've got I wouldn't use the word niche titles. That's that, but I guess you could. And Don, maybe I'll, I'll go to you here as 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 kind of you know ask you a question off of Crap's question is th their titles that they have that people are aware of. Uh, they're they're great. I think they're great in quality. Uh, I just think that they're 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 not necessarily hitting everybody at home. But that doesn't matter because it adds to Microsoft's portfolio, right? So they're, they're hard ones to judge. I would say because yeah. I, I think they're a, a studio that's you know there's there's two there's a way to look at studios. Like sometimes studios need a good publisher, and sometimes that that marriage is not a good marriage. Sometimes. Um, and I, I kind of look at Obsidian as that sort of company where they can make great games if they have the right publisher um, behind them. And they, they're not the quickest to make games. They're a little bit on the slower side um, as far as a team is concerned. So I almost look at this inquiry, like whatever they're going to be building, if they do end up building something for Microsoft, is more of a support team of other studios. Um, cause I've seen them do a lot of that sort of stuff in the past and that's where I see, I see that happening. Well, uh, just a quick, they did KOTOR Knights of the Old yeah. Republic two. They did Neverwinter Nights, yeah. Alpha Protocol, Fallout New Vegas, Dungeon Siege three, um, South Park Stick of Truth, uh, Pillars of Eternity. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see Pillars of Eternity two, which I don't, I don't know if that's come out yet. Oh uh, yeah, it did. Okay. Yes, it did. I think, yeah. or it's, you know, or it's about, yeah. So they've done some quality stuff. Um, it could be like you say, but I think, I personally think that maybe they would be doing something. Um, oh, I just saw somebody who flipped their PSVR for a Nintendo switch. Noof man after your own heart, huh? <laughs> Noof, no, no. <laughs> boom, boom, kaboom, boom, boom, kaboom. I traded my switch for, uh, or I traded in my PSVR for a switch. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, this is cool. This is cool because I think they're a talented developer. Microsoft needs RPG, uh, style, uh, developers, single pay player type developers could work out really well for them. I think, uh, you know, again, it's another studio. I said this earlier because 
I think Microsoft has a dangerous first party studio for the first time um, in a long time, right? Like yep. their lineup of first party studios is very quality. Um, and when I say this, people are like, there's no way there is quality as, as Sony. And I'm like, listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying as a whole, I think they have better talent throughout multiple studios. Whereas Sony, I think their most talented are in a couple of studios, right? Like mm -hmm. I would think Naughty Dog and probably Sony Santa Monica being the top ones there. But um for me personally, I think this would be a huge move and and something very smart on their part to kind of get them out there and uh, and, and working on stuff as soon as possible. They're actually uh, in California, so I mean another yeah, Californian right. uh, type studio. And maybe they could. Maybe you're right, another Don. Maybe one. they maybe they helped the initiative. Uh, who knows? You know? I mean, so, I mean, obviously they got background and and they've worked with a lot of different companies, right? Like in a lot of different franchises. So they, yeah. I mean, they have that sort of stuff under their belt. So they have they're somewhat flexible, as far as that concerned. And honestly, you know, this is all rumor, but I I think if Crackdown goes okay, and then I know this is kind of a touchy subject for for people, but if Crackdown goes okay for them, I see Sumo Digital being bought up by Microsoft as well. I, you know what? I've heard that, and I and I mentioned that to someone, and they're like, "You think?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I I had mentioned Undead Labs, and people were like, "You think?" And I was like, "Yeah." Uh, that made a lot. They have a, str they have a sense. strong relationship with them. Like that's the yeah. thing what people don't realize is like they help work on a couple other titles with Microsoft. And, you know, they actually uh, help with Forza Horizon and then for those titles. They actually, and um, yeah, and Motorsport. They they're uh mm -hmm. their their background type people they've actually done some games they're not really spotlight developers no um but they did little big planet 3 which was a good game it wasn't great but it was good they did uh they did a really great sonic all-stars racing 2 mm -hmm. the, the transforming one that one was amazing uh that might have been better than the, any mario kart in my opinion just fantastic game um they've done a you know they're they're, they're a decent developer so i'm dancing with you on that one don um i would love to see them pick up a couple more and with some of the stuff that's going on with um, Google, like I don't think this is reactionary towards Sony at all, to be honest with you. And we can, again, I've got other topics that kind of tie into this. I think this is more Microsoft being proactive against some of those looming shadows of people who they consider to be yeah. more of a... Um, well, here's the thing, though, crap. You know, and I think Don... Competition. We, when me and Don were having our discussions way back and then we were kind of getting into it, the thing about Google, Google uh, making or Amazon making these 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 last minute moves and grabbing these guys from 2K, etc. I, I think these are are great moves for them and they're in the right direction, but they're years out. Yeah, I mean years out. And the problem is is that everything here is exponential. So Microsoft has now, okay, and it doesn't seem like I don't see any signs of slowing. Uh, they are really, you know, they've got like let's just goof around and say eight solid studios you know or say, say six if you want that's still a lot you know yeah. sony's got a ton and and it's like you know here you go you have you have amazon trying to creep in there and you have google trying to do this and that and if they're just going to come out with streaming boxes yeah they'll eat up some of the mobile uh you know uh market and they'll do well and they'll be okay and they'll probably hold their own because they're not going to lose their shirt investing into it but Microsoft is now stepping on the gas. You know, Phil probably walked in and said, these guys are going to cream us if we don't step on the gas now. Okay, we've got the infrastructure. Let's use it or lose it. And Microsoft's using it. Sony is going to do their best to keep up with the Joneses. But as we've said a million times, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Apple are not in the same category as Sony. The okay. only way Google and I would say Amazon stand a chance is if they buy out Sony or Nintendo. That's the only way I can see them. That's a great point, Don. Or EA. Yeah, that yeah, maybe EA. Maybe yeah. maybe that's maybe that's enough, right? But I, I think they need that brand recognition that a Nintendo name brings or a Sony name brings to the table, as far as that's concerned. And those love or hate the brands, they have weight behind them. Um, and so if they can acquire that, and just be honest, both Nintendo and Sony need help on the network side of things. Well, so here's the, like here's my only, my, there. here's my only wrench in that, that cog you got there, buddy is, uh, Sony does so well because of their ties with the Japanese developers. And yes. that doesn't mean that money doesn't talk money speaks many languages, but, 
Uh, realistically, Google just coming in, not having that that signature or not knowing that that business as well as Sony and Microsoft do right now or Nintendo. Um, the Nintendo you currently know and are familiar with, the Sony you currently know and are familiar with would not work quite the same way. And we know this, right? You know, I think everyone on the panel kind of gets this. If Google or Amazon was to acquire them, do I think it's it's not going to happen? No, I think I think that was a very a very feasible idea. But at the same time, it would it wouldn't be the PlayStation you know anymore because the relationships would be. As a matter of fact, Google or Amazon grabbing PlayStation. If I'm Microsoft, I'm like we're in. You know what I mean? Like because like all of a sudden, you know what I'm doing? If I'm Microsoft, I'm picking up the phone, I'm hopping on my jet. And I'm going over to see all the Japanese developers and go, hey, listen, I know we haven't done great business together, but you know that we are invested and we're not going anywhere. Google might buy you, acquire you, work with you, and then toss you aside in two years. We will work with you. We are not going anywhere. We've been here since the early 2000s. We're not leaving. And that makes that warm, fuzzy feeling. And you'll actually see Microsoft pick up a lot more Japanese titles, which is awesome. Well, but, it's weird when you saw Microsoft come into the scene with the original yeah. Xbox, right? The reason right. why they're able to come in after established boxes that were existed is they had the tools. They had the infrastructure behind the scenes, right? Some of the tools they had were making games possible on other platforms, right? So developers were already familiar with it. So yep. that's the reason why they got that third-party support where Nintendo always struggled with that at around that time. They still struggle with it today. So... You know, it's it's interesting. I mean, I just don't. You know, who knows how all this is going going to turn out? You know, as far as that's concerned, but the streaming is part of the equation. It's it's not the replacement for what's in your in your homes if you're a dedicated gamer, but it, it is going to be a factor into things. Um, and that infrastructure is going to be essential, I think, with future technologies going forward, because there are certain things that your home box are just going to do better than streaming. But there are going to be some tasks that are going to be better to stream to to your local box. Yeah. Um, so to really kind of move the industry forward, got to have that infrastructure and that pillar there for cloud-based services. Well, the thing about it, Don, you're, you're 100% right. And that's what I was saying. It's no skin off Google or Amazon's nose if they want to get into those types of games where it's streaming off of the box. That's not an issue. It doesn't cost them a lot to get into the game. But the problem is, is for those guys, if they ever look to say, I want to be on the higher pillar, the higher tier, Microsoft having all of these first party studios locked, studios locked up with this talent, that does that does kind of give them this leg up because Microsoft's going to be able to do the streaming as well. So you take a game like Fortnite, right? Let's just mm -hmm. say the, the, the five year from now Fortnite. And that's a streaming game and graphics don't really matter, right? It doesn't really, we were saying this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's not about the graphical in, in intensity. It's just about the game and the gameplay and the fun of it. Microsoft's going to have that same title plus all of this. So that's why Microsoft will always have that leg up. You know, Sony currently has that leg up. Now, could Sony sell? I think EA, this is what I was kind of uh, wanting to get to, and I, I got off on a tangent. But EA getting acquired by a Google or Amazon. Now, that that brings Google and Amazon up to the to the big boys poker table because now they've got this array of sports games. They've got this array of RPGs. You got this array of shooters, right? Now they're sitting there with Microsoft and they're like, "Hey guys, this is a pretty cool table you guys got here. Thanks." I just, just got my executive seat pushed up to the front of it because now they're there with the big boys because they have a lot of different games they can play and then they become an equal party. Whereas if they just acquire just Sony, that's really great because they're going to have those awesome games. But at the same time, I think a lot of the Japanese developers would maybe think to flee a little bit and say, you know, we can go to Microsoft or Nintendo at this point. We don't have to stay with Google or Amazon. Yeah, you know, uh, like for me personally, and I, I, I kind of wanted to make this point um, a little bit earlier about this, yeah. right? So I don't think that Microsoft particularly believes that they're going to be a player for like the home consoles like we do. I think that Microsoft is worried that they're going to start buying developers and and keep That's them true. away. Um, like, Because look what happened. You guys remember Double Helix were the ones that made Killer Instinct to start off this generation. Amazon bought them out, right? Yep. That was like a kick to the nuts for Microsoft. Um, I think that this is something, uh, and even I mentioned this, like I had a court kind of correspondence with Phil, and I was like, 
this was before E3. I'm like, you know, you guys really should buy, you know, Playground Games or Undead Labs and some of these other studios. Um, and I mentioned a, a handful of them. I was like, because what happens when Google or Amazon wants to get into the, into gaming and they start buying them up, right? And kind of no response, you know, kind of a, a just a smile kind of thing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so I think that it's it's pretty obvious that Microsoft is being proactive, not because of Sony, but more or less because of what um what what these other companies like Google yeah. are gonna be because like and and this was something that I had a topic of as well, which is goes right into the 2K Games founder. He just joined Amazon Game Studios as their vice president now, right? Yeah, and he's promising right. big surprises and stuff like so that. So is, individuals are easy to hire. They really are. Like if you want to go, if you want to attract some individuals to work for you, you can do that. But getting a team that works well together, that is much harder. Yeah. Um, in, in regards to that, because I can put a bunch of talented people in the room. You never know. They may not come out with skin, like <laughs> you know, as far as that's concerned. Because <laughs> they 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 wouldn't agree with one another sometimes. Um, so you know, it's difficult to get a studio or build a studio from the ground up, you know, as far as that stuff is is concerned. So, you know, getting studios that are already established, they have a culture that's within that studio that you can build upon and then hire additional staff. That I, that seems to me an easier prospect um, than building something from the ground up as far as that goes and buying super top tier talent from all these other places that may not work well together. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's kind of my take on it. So, I mean, studios are important for sure. Yeah. Well, you said you're, well, what yeah, Don said that's right though. Crap, we should just reiterate is is the whole like you've seen a lot of dream teams put together in sports. 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 Yeah. But at the same time, they don't always win championships, and that's what Don's saying. You can go put a lot of famous people in the room. It doesn't mean they're going to work as a team. So I do agree with that. Yeah. Um, so that's why when I see Google or Amazon making these uh, you know acquisitions, I I say that's bravo. Bravo, step in the right direction, but you have a lot of work, sir. You have a lot of work left to do. So, yeah. you know, with that being said, Microsoft is is kind of probably snickering, saying that's fine. They grabbed a, a great talent there, but we've got a ton of that in house already. Let me uh, just say, it's always uh, it's always scary when you're competing against companies that are so big they can afford to lose money because they can go for broke for a long time and really bring the challenge to the table. And when it comes to Amazon and Google, they've got a very strong foothold in, in the cell phone and the mobile market right now, and they do have the resources to bring uh, to the table. I'm sure if they want, they can buy up a bunch of uh, you know smart developers and bring talent in from a variety of places. But I mean, they're definitely focus is in the in the stream and the in in that sort of i think area where microsoft could potentially be heading so it's going to be an interesting to see what happens over the next few years but i definitely think microsoft has always been paying attention to where uh apple amazon google have been going with various trends and vice versa they've also been paying attention to microsoft it's kind of funny how connect was uh pretty much a lost idea until uh you know everybody else has copied it and all of a sudden they're geniuses because they've got these basically mock-offs of connect you know with alexa and all these freaking things so uh but yeah definitely you got to take them serious and um just try to stay one step ahead of the game uh salty what do you think about all this stuff uh the obsidian and all this um buying studios and whatnot yeah interesting <laughs> interesting take salty uh i'm not sure i agree with your point a i don't think I salt, salt he, he disappeared I think he got, from he's the not here. here i don't know what happened oh, okay uh, <laughs> like hold on i yeah like you can see like i'm looking at a at a thing here okay so yeah salty not even here i'm sure he would agree that it was great great move by microsoft um he, he thinks it's great he hopes that anybody who's not happy that uh, Microsoft is doing this, stay salty, uh, because that's what it's all about. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think as far as the Obsidian thing goes, I think it's a, it'll be a fantastic purchase for Microsoft because I think Obsidian has a lot of upside to them. They have had some decent games, despite maybe not all being uh, like massive sales successes. They got a pretty solid track record. I know they're sort of well renowned throughout various circles and in multiple situations where people have said, "Well, if Microsoft were to buy a company, which one would you like to see them buy?" And their name sort of always comes up in that list of the short 
short list of developers. So I think it would be awesome. I mean, as far as myself, I've, I've never really played or gotten into any of their games. Uh, I think the only one that I have by them right now is uh, South Park, the stick of truth. That's but a good game. That, I, don't, I don't, I don't have anything else with, with the, that company on it. So for me personally, it's, it's not as big a deal, but I still think it's a great purchase if it, if it do, does come to fruition. Yeah, I, I think that again, that's a that's a if as well. So that's important to kind of point out that Microsoft um, actually has to, uh, you know, approve this or whatever. But it could be something because Mikey Barra was tweeting out that it's a fun day, lots of exciting things happening. I, I'm not a big coincidence guy, right? I know that some people uh, believe in coincidence. I don't. Uh, so to see him kind of tweet that out and, you know, maybe they have a few more studio announcements for uh, Gamescom. Don't you think that would be something kind of legit? No. Yeah. I don't possibly. Know. It, it, it's hard to tell. Gamescom has never been a, you know, it's kind of like watching a trickless magician. You know what I mean? They, they get out there and they're like, you know, it's like David Blaine. He's like, today I'm going to do the greatest defeat of all time. And you're like, what kind of trick is he going to do? And see, I'm going to hold my breath for three days. You're like, that's not a trick. <laughs> you know what I mean? So here I am, not breathing. I'm not breathing. <laughs> I'm not. Like, trust me. <laughs> I guess we'll tune in next week to see if you are. Yeah. So they, you know, Xbox shows up on stage. They do all this like fireworks. And they're like this and that. And they're like, and now, not <laughs> Phil Spencer. And you're like, Did you say not Phil Spencer? And then Aaron Greenberg gets out there with an untied pair of high tops and like, and you're a like big, what is he doing? And, uh, uh, your Lincoln gray beard, right? And a like, gray beard, and he's like, "I'm out here with the PUBG guys." You're like, "God damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> we already have PUBG, Aaron, and you know what I mean. That's Gamescom, so I'm not really thinking anything's gonna come out of Gamescom crap. It hasn't since the time the Tomb Raider. And that, that Dude, good. I'm trying to stay positive here, right. right? They can't just leave everybody hanging for half the year with no news. Well, they right? did say that they were gonna do maybe an Xbox show sometime this year, right? They, yeah, that could be. Yeah, later on in the year, that Let's would hope. be cool. Um, I think it would be good. Like, I, I think that you need to do a little bit better job of keeping fans invested and interested. Right. Um, so far, both these companies have done a piss poor job about, you know, who's done a better job is Nintendo. Cause they do directs every couple of months or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, like just, they were just, they just dropped some new stuff today, right. About uh, smash brothers or whatever that is. Uh, in fact, we got Luca in the chat. Shout out to her. She's going to buy her first Nintendo switch soon. She has conformed <laughs> and, and declared that she is a Nintendo switch fan. Um, she wants to go full Nintendo. She's going to do an unboxing and all that kind of stuff on her channel. It's going to be great. Uh, great. She, yeah, she's a big fan of uh, Nintendo now. So, uh, Just yeah, thank, congrats. Don't, 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 don't play it while driving, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congrats, Luca, on, on joining the Nintendo fan base. Luca, welcome, welcome to Nintendo. It's, Luca, it's great. please, please mooch two Octopath Travelers for you and I. That would hey, be great. Octopath and also, is good. Is, it, is good. Like it, I'm surprised. It is good. And the other thing I want to say, Luca tweeted it out the other day, and I started doing some research, and there's no answers. Where is our Dark Souls remastered on Switch? Because I want to take that on the road. <laughs> what the hell is that? Hey, I'm gonna pay the bills. Y9 Power says all these games built from the ground up is very time consuming. Instead of updating and optimizing the current engine like Unreal, which has improved over a decade. Um, yeah, like these, a lot of the engines keep getting improvements and things like that. I think we see a bit better, uh, situation when they do it from the ground up, but at the same time, uh, apparently Salty's power went out. So, I mean, we've been there, Mooch. Yeah, we, I, <laughs> I hear you, dude. I mean, I, I gotta, it's been 20 years since the power went out and two weeks ago, the power went out. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like the whole neighborhood walked out like it was a twilight zone. Yeah. <laughs> uh so. don since you're a developer is it easier to build uh to just update engines instead of uh building from the ground up or uh, uh well I, here's the thing all engines are based on something that already exists before right they don't yeah. always build it from the ground up it just depends on how far back they want to tear it down and re-optimize what's there um and squeeze more out of out the box right that's what what a lot of this stuff is so you mean right now i'm just now getting to start a play with, um, you know, ray tracing right now in Unreal. Mm -hmm. um, so eventually what Unreal is going to do is just add a number to it, right? Like it's not going to be like they redid it from the ground up when, when all that stuff becomes available. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, optimization of, of engines, it's required every once in a while. Um, and longer things go out of date, you know, more you have to kind of go back and rebuild up from the ground up. I, th I would say... 
the slip space engine is a perfect example of of that that's still there's still original halo code uh in that engine um, as far as i understand but they had to go way far back to optimize and to get what they showed you on the e3 stage so you know that was a shelf project they were i think they were supposed to do around halo 5 and they didn't um, they actually yeah. had to shelf the project because certain technologies were in line and stuff like that for them to kind of dive in. And also, for as far as I understand, the finances weren't there. Um, so that they just kind of had to build on what they already had before. So, yeah. Um, speaking of kind of this this stuff, Microsoft listed Nintendo ahead of uh, of Sony as their competitor for the first time since the Wii, which was very interesting because usually when they list this stuff, it it really does matter uh in in the order that they bring it out and so the fact that they are kind of listing this as uh factual they said so according to this guy microsoft's new 10k specifically puts nintendo before sony as xbox competitor for the first time since 2013 uh the rest of the filing shows order is meaningful listing amazon before google as an azure rival for example and they used uh word doc to compare it uh very interesting that that they did this um, do you guys think they see Nintendo with their hybrid platform as more of a competitor going forward than Sony? Who, who Microsoft? Yeah. You know, I, I I heard you say that in one of your videos, crap, and I'm sure you had like you just stated some some evidence to it. I, um, <laughs> I don't know when Moose pulls a John Doe. What 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 what, no, what was that crap? No, uh, I, I get it. I get what you're saying, but when I heard you say it in the video, and I heard you say it now, it, it, it does kind of warrant that response. Like, no, they don't. Well, no, no. Listen, they, like they they you, they list this, and but listen, they list they, they list them in order, right? Specific order of um, who they consider to be the biggest uh, cha uh, rival or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, and the fact that they have Nintendo before Sony, I think, speaks volumes about what they really think of Sony and Sony going forward, as opposed to Nintendo, who seems to have a better grasp on uh, the technologies and the hybrid thing and and and, yeah. and what consumers want. Maybe they look at that as a bit more of a rival than than what Sony's doing. Yeah, that's I mean, my I, point. I, I, I see what you're saying, but I, I'm going to go ahead and say what I said three minutes ago. No, <sighs> I mean, Don, do you see what I'm saying? I, I don't, I don't <laughs> see that. I mean, Nintendo at one at their best was had 11 billion dollars cash. That's, like what? <laughs> like, hey, yeah. well, how are we talking about it? If, if, if Microsoft really felt that way, they wanted to just make a portable unit that even failed, they could do it tomorrow. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Nintendo's doing well with the Switch. I'm enjoying it. I like it when I hit the road. I like games like Doom. I like games like Bayonetta. I want to get Dark Souls on there. Luca made a good point. Dark Souls is not going to look very good on the Switch, but I'm going to be able to hopefully play it and I'll enjoy it for what it is. So that's fine. They found the niche with having 720p to 1080p, 900p on the road. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but to say that Microsoft is sweating that, I, I can't get behind it. You know, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, under, I don't know if, how that's really – like it matters, <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you. Damn you. Well, I mean, it's just a point of talk. It's not like yeah, I'm – Yeah, I, I, I yeah. get it. Like, like I get why it's, it's coming up and why traditionally they, they do put it in order – um, but I, I can't pretend that you think we're Microsoft's mindset if the, if it is true. Like what? What's, That's what I'm saying. It's hard to put your mind on something like that. It's like, well, yeah, you know, what's that, like is it is it Nintendo's partnership that yeah. they have with that whatever big conglomerate over overseas? Is, is that what drives it, driving it? Um, or I, maybe they just look at maybe Sony's mm -hmm. just doesn't have the infrastructure to deal with online. So the only so. The, their their business model may be dying. The only thing that's going to survive is people yeah, I mean, innovate. Yeah, you, know, you know, I I don't know what the the thought process is there. Like that one's like, I'm grasping at straws, just trying to figure out how and why. Yeah, um, right. As far as that goes, and, you know, you know, I I'm st I still worry about Nintendo going forward. You know, and to, to be honest with you, and how relevant they're going to be, and for how long. Yeah, because you wonder now. That's a good actually. Yeah. That's that's a great segue question, Don. I mean, the question is is so. Do we get a Switch 2 that's just more powerful handheld, or do they go back to the traditional console again? Um, I, I, at this point, you see that they've they had the Wii U tablet. We have the Switch, and I don't see them looking back. I think they're going to continue this mobile market because they see how the mobile games 
but they're gonna have to open up their horizons and get more mobile games on there, right? Well, and here's the thing, more. though. Like Nintendo is supposedly looking into a successor to the 3DS, which the 3DS doubled year on year in sales. Right. So that's pretty impressive to me. I mean, I like it. I just I, I wish Nintendo would come around to an achievement system. You know, yeah. uh, in, in my personal opinion, I think that they that's I, something that. Uh, I think you're onto something there, Crab. You said it a while ago before the Switch was actually announced, and I'll say this much. Uh, I'm not an achievement guy. I that it, they, you know, a lot of people are running around like, I have 350,000. Now I'm a gamer. I'm like, all right, sure. <laughs> so, I'm a gamer now. Right? Yeah. Like, I, I made mean, it. I made I, it. I, but I mean, I, at the same like time, it. I like it as just something for myself. I mean, no, I understand. Uh, you know I mean? No, you, I think it, you, I think you, it is you, great. You, and I think you made, yeah. you, you made a good point. I, want, I actually want to back up your, your, your point is that the one thing about Nintendo games is I'm playing is I wouldn't mind. I don't, I don't need to get a thousand out of a thousand on an Xbox game. Neither do I. I but, I'm not an achievement hunter, but it does I make like you getting, feel good when yeah. you do something. Yeah. Like yeah. I like, like sometimes it's they'll recognized. make you keep going. Yeah. It's like you hear that little boop and then you're yeah. like, Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, for me personally, like if I pay 60 bucks for a game, I want to get three, four hundred, five. You know what I mean? From it just by beating it. Yeah, um, like I, I developed. I, I found so many of the different uh, like alien languages in No Man's Sky. Boom! I get an achievement. I walked so far yeah. in No Man's Sky. Boom! I get an achievement. I traveled so far on my ship. I get. You an got? Achievement. Have you got achievements on that yet? Oh yeah, I've gotten four or five. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. I haven't got. I haven't gotten any. I guess I'm I should. Playing. Well, you got to play it, crap. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it, well, I mean, it, look, it's fun. I, mean, I gotta say, it's fun. I'm, I'm not a, a shout out to Grave Gaming. Grave plays it. I, I I've been actually talking to Grave about it back and forth on Twitter. Like, I'm not playing it as much as him. But yeah, he's that streaming game, the hell out of that game. Well, there's like, something wow. there's something to No Man's Sky where they really they really did something right with this this next update. They really did. I don't know if that's one of your topics or not, crap. But realistically, they did a hell of a job reamping the game. And uh, listen, it's not Red Dead Redemption Two. No, okay, it's not. But it's a game where you're like, you know, those nights where you're sitting there and you're like, I don't know if I want to play tonight or not. I, I just, I'm not in the mood to get invested in the two hours of this, that, whether it's grinding on Destiny or even doing a Mafia Three game. It doesn't matter what it is. This is a game where you play. You can put the controller down. You can, uh, you know, phone call comes on. Your favorite baseball games on a movie. You can tie, you know, with, with the Xbox especially, you can just hit pause. You can you can go you know you go in your spaceship so you don't get in trouble because if you leave yourself on the planet you can get you can get you pretty much die. But my point yeah. being is that like you can do other things. There's it's a game that's just like it's very very relaxing. It's very chill. Yeah, it's hard to explain. You know what's funny about it and the people that are like, uh, you know, it's it's interesting because now yeah. Xbox fans love it but they hated it when it was on PlayStation. Wow. I had it on PlayStation. That was, and a it shell, that was a shell of a game on PlayStation. Yeah, it, it was horrible. It was right. absolutely horrible. Of course, of course, I like we what it is it. now. Yeah, I like yeah. It now. It, it's, yeah, a, exactly. it's like somebody hating Sea of Thieves now, but loving it a year later, right? Like, there's more content. There. Right. So they, they may they may change their mind because you know that's what they needed to. Actually that's a good example, Don. Like Sea of so, Thieves in 20, uh, 2019 is going to be a, a hell of a lot better than Sea of Thieves March twenty eighteen. Yeah, and you wouldn't be wrong for uh, holding off like me. I held off for a long time and going back into it. And Mooch, we hopped back on that the other day, and you yeah. got to admit, man, we had fun. Well, again, I, 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 fun. I would like to agree with you, but I'd also like to reiterate what Mooch said a week ago. It was hashtag fun. We had a field day playing it, but the fun and the hashtag fun came from Mooch and Crap. <laughs> Not <interesting>, right. <laughs> it was. It was. Man, I mean, the game itself. We were just loading cannonballs into the cannons, firing them, uh, hitting half the time, and then going. Man, man. So I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I did have a blast, and I would definitely go back into the game if I have crap and the amazing crew we had in the chat it was all like it was harmony it was absolutely yeah harmony we had a lot of people well there was like 12 people in the thing including yes, the don who wasn't on yeah. ours like there were three different sets of games going on right. and we were all in the same chat but it was funny as hell like again here's the thing i like that about sea of these man yes. you could kick back i agree with a with a beverage or whatever and just have fun and goof off and that's what makes it fun to me i'm not saying it's technically the best game no of all time but it's fun when you play it with friends and you're having a good time and right. you can just be totally chill like part of the time where uh corpse and jago were doing all the stuff yeah i just had my thing set to dance and me and you were just well, like goofing around that was like, great laughing. stinking shout out to stinking corpse who's also patreon of mnc and, and, and uh and also uh jago those guys were great 
because they let us be mooching crap while they, yes. they were playing the game. Exactly. We Fantastic. were just mooching crap, having a good time. And they were just like pretty much taking care of everything. And by the way, that uh, was a difficult ass yes, DLC. Was. Yes, the, it is. Well, like, uh, how many ships did he have uh, working with you on that? We had one other ship one other, working uh, yeah, with us, but, but they weren't. But they weren't working with us in the chat, so they so, just kind of came alongside. So it really didn't work yeah. out. So, yeah. so when you actually do get in the game chat and you establish that, it's interesting because you set those alliances, and the alliances will show up on the map. So anyone that's part of the alliance, they'll show up. You'll see exactly where their ships are on the map that want to be friendly and join up and do the event, which I thought was a cool change to to it. And then once you've kind of done it, it it's weird because you're like finding all these pirates, you're collecting all the supplies to be able to engage. In in what happens is once you like it was like five ships we had to destroy uh, one round, and there was one little uh, sloop sailing around grabbing all the treasure for us and at the end all hell broke loose at this one time because we basically decided to hijack the ship turn off the alliance and sell off on someone else's ship with all the treasure and have people chasing us and that's what happens with sea of thieves is like there's this weird agreement that kind of happens but it can go south at any point in time yeah. and all of a sudden it just changes the dynamic of that game and it, it's i i actually enjoyed the uh the new uh, DLC quite a bit. It, once you start like getting into it, yeah. it, it's actually easier to find ships than you think it is. Well, and all the other stuff. Well, so yeah, you know, because like okay, so any of you guys that follow the podcast that we do, you know that Mooch had specifically brought on a couple of haters of the Sea of Thieves <laughs> DLC on Crossfire last Friday. I didn't and bring like, haters on it. Oh, clowns clowns. Is, he's a usual suspect. Yeah, I'm clowns. I hate everything. Clowns has been out since day one. I hate clowns. it. I know, but. Uh, Doesn't my, clowns my, play like Sea of Thieves almost daily though? He's a he's a pirate legend, he's right? Pirate, but they didn't like. I, I, but, but everything he brought up. Me, he brought hey, up the pirate every, <laughs> for fourteen hours a day. Every, every, hold on, let me let me say this though. Everything <laughs> that he said was wrong though about this DLC. He's like, you got to wait hours. We jumped right in. No, that was something else, wasn't it? I don't. They changed. Know. It. They changed yeah, the time frame, so else. there's there's less downtime. Because so it looks like what they did, what they changed is what what should have been changed, which was. You should have just enough time to collect your supplies on the way to the next battle. Does that make sense? Yeah. You, you got to cross the map. That's what you should. But what it was is that time to that next battle was much, much longer. And so I think it was up to like three hours until the next uh, battle would occur. And, and if you're if you're working a job and you, you only have so much time to play and you can't get into one of those battles, then that kind of sucks for those people. So, yeah. so there was a change uh, after. Okay. So, yeah. well, well, because yeah, we jumped in it and and we gathered supplies and went right out there and started fighting right. these ships. Yeah. And I was like, this is badass. Not only were we fighting these skeleton ships, but they, which was awesome and a lot of fun. Right. But then the megalodon starts chasing <laughs> after us too. I was like, oh, and that was the first time that I'd seen that because we didn't get to do the megalodon DLC or anything like that. Which, by the way, hit that like button. Let's see if we can't get over two hundred likes. We're very close. Um, which was really cool. Like, can you imagine? Yeah. Uh, I wish you could like fast forward it in time. How many creatures and and different things they could have? Like, uh, you could make the argument, and I get that that all this shit should have been there to begin with, right? It would have well, been. You know, that, this this is a pretty good DLC. I mean, um, yes, yes. I mean, uh, and, and a lot of stuff can happen. Uh, ask Salty. Salty and them had their ship loaded. I think it was the same night you guys were playing. They invited mm -hmm. me to come over, and they have already had a boatload of stuff. I get get on their ship because they lost somebody. We go to get some uh, other ships who are already parked on the shore. They're already in, and and they're all like, "Yeah, let's team up." And they go and add the alliance thing. And just before we uh, bring in a couple of treasures that we had, some shit hit on the ship, starts shooting us, and sinks our ship. So we lost all of our like all the stuff we collected. Yeah. And then we spent the next hour basically chasing this ad has all around the all around the map. And uh, but no, it's fun. I mean, even when those skeleton guys hit you with the cannonballs and they make you drunk, and then you can't put the boards back. Yeah. Yeah, there's the one there's That's one hilarious. that makes you dance as well yeah it's, it's funny the funny part was me and mooch are playing this game with everybody for four hours and we go what did we do and mooch no. is like we did nothing yeah. <laughs> we, like, <laughs> we did have, we played for four hours we did have the time of our lives laughing cashed, and nothing happened we, we, cashed, we got zero treasure didn't complete yeah. the DLC. It was just four hours. it was like an episode of Seinfeld there's an episode yeah we're just we're just sailing around 
I, yeah. I go, what happened? He's like, nothing. That's a show. Are There's you a mooching show. Madden while we're in this podcast? I'm a mooch. It's come on. Hey, come do. on, man. Somebody, somebody <laughs> got to mooch one for crap gamers. Listen, but you. You're mooching now. I am, man. I got I got a mooch. I got I got a oh, mooch. Man. That's Madden. my thing. But, but yeah, you Madden. know, like <laughs> it was funny because we did. We played for four hours. Nothing. <laughs> like you, I got nothing. a five gamer score, so I guess that's that's better than nothing. But um, yeah, like I I I like that game a lot. So I know people get pissy when you say it, but Don, you'll admit that there's just something fresh and kind of fun about playing that game, yeah, right? It, it's different. As a matter of fact, uh, the cooperation that I have experienced with this new DLC it remind me of the first raids from uh, Destiny, actually, where people actually were a lot more cooperative and they were trying to help each other out and stuff like that. And sometimes that chaos breaks loose and that unpredictableness that which makes the game fun is, is part of that social aspect of it. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. No, is it game of the year contender? Hell no, it's not that. But yeah, uh, it, it, what really what it is 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 a community driven game. It's yeah, a community driven game. It's what it's what it is. Yeah, and, and I and I and I think it's more than obvious that it's successful given that they keep hiring and they have four teams to to build onto it. And I'm really excited to see what it could be uh kind of in the future because I really like what, what they've done with it. And it's just there's just something about it, man. I'm more in my element, I'm having a good time. Anybody that's played that game in a chat with me will tell you crap gamer sounds like he's having the time of his life when he's playing that game. Would you not agree to that, Don? Yeah. Yeah. I agree you do. You, you yeah. are having a, a field day. And, you know, the thing about it is, is like, well, think about it this way too, crap, right? So a lot, a lot of people like to get don't work. Some people like to go to a bar, relax, they yuck it up, have a couple of drinks with their friends, uh, whether they're talking sports or games sports. or whatever, yes. work or whatever. This is something like we podcast all week, right? So at the end of Friday, we get done with Crossfire. We get on. We just did. We've done six or plus hours of podcasting. We get on, you get some people that are great from the community. You get some people that are great from our, our panels that join us. And then you sit back and it's a game that you can kind of relax, have a couple of drinks, people kind of let loose, and it's fun. And that's why I think you say that fun part of Crap Gamer shines and comes out. The game allows that. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh my God, shoot, 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 shoot. It's not a shooter. You're not looking here. You're not looking left. You're not looking right. It's, it's, it's a game that allows you to to just relax and yeah. it, it, it's unique it's a unique type of game it, it brings the interesting personalities together too it, it does like, yes. you know like for example i was playing with uh flip and livewire of all people right in delirium blades you can imagine what that ship turned out like right that's yeah. awesome <laughs> so and you know and it's different every time like that i throw out the bat signal to get people to join me on sea of thieves right so you know the dynamic changes all the time vogel sometimes joins me and you know that's just whole different dynamic where it's like you know a lot of times we're communicating like who's on first it's kind of like how how it is when we're trying to navigate <laughs> and stuff like that so i mean it's just a unique little game and it's not meant yeah. to replace anything it's just meant to be you know something you turn on maybe once a month right and, yeah. and you, you you go through and do some stuff and then yeah. turn off and there's like it's not like this urgency to i have to level up i have to do this i'm going to fall behind the jones it, it's more or less every once in a while when there's more content, you want to try it out and see what it's all about. And, and then you remember how fun the game is. It's kind of how I look at it. And there's yeah. nothing out there really like it. That's the thing I was saying to someone the other day, like you, there isn't a lot of competition per se, like direct. That's just like this game or very similar. There's, there's really nothing like it. Uh, I mean, some people are going to love Sea of Thieves and some people are going to absolutely hate it. And I don't think your opinion is right or wrong one way or the other. Uh, I, I think a large part of your enjoyment with that game, as I said, uh, I mean, you know, it's going to come from the friends that you roll with because you create that's your right. stories, you create your memories outside of that. I don't know. Like if it, like I, I will say, if you, you got to roll one of those sloops by yourself and you're trying to learn the game as you go it is going to be a bit of a grind that could turn you off but if you get the right person who knows what to do who actually knows what the fucking difference is between going northeast south and west you know these sorts of things uh there is a lot of enjoyment to be had in that game yeah i agree I, I agree 100. I think yeah. that that's something that they're uh, really doing incredible with. Uh, Mooch, this I thought was something interesting because you hate fighting games, but Tekken yes. Seven is getting Walking Dead specific. Yeah, 
champion. And I, I sent Mooch a gif of that guy pounding the, the control. <laughs> I was like, here's Mooch right now practicing because no. I figured it's something you'd be Listen, into. As that. much as I like uh, Rick Grimes and Negan, <laughs> uh, that's not bringing me to fighting games. Yeah, I left fighting games a long time ago. When Mortal Kombat first came to Sega Genesis and Nintendo uh, SNES, that was when I was into it. I just I can't do it. I can't do it. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's uh it's you, you punch your controller, you step on it, uh you elbow it, you know, it's it's I don't know. I don't I, I just don't I don't get the thrill out of it anymore. Doesn't matter who's no. in it. Oh, so so you're not you're not tempted by this at all? No, 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 I wouldn't even mooch a copy of Tekken Seven. Damn. No, that's because I would I really honestly I would not play it. That's not fair. That's not yeah. fair. Hey, I, I understand totally. So anybody else interested in this or no? No? I'm, I'm sure Mega will make me play it with him again. It's me, Kate Mega. Get get this get this DLC. Man, uh, I, so <laughs> I, I play I played Tekken and and I enjoyed it for what it was, but yeah, yeah, it wasn't it was like it was nostalgia. That's that's all that game is, right? Yeah. It just feels like I'm playing an old game again and yeah. <clears throat> It's not a bad old game. It's one of the best of its era and its time, uh, but it doesn't bring a lot of new to the table. Unfortunately. Well, nostalgia is a hell of a drug, and I saw something that really kind of hit home as to what nostalgia is uh, a lot of the time. Uh, and Mooch, you'll probably like this. So you remember the show Voltron, right, Mooch? Yeah. From like back in the 80s. Okay, because I remember that as a kid. I remember loving that show, and I had the toys and stuff like that. They remade that on Netflix, and I was watching an interview with the people that remade it, and they were like, we wanted to make the Voltron people, or, or we wanted to make a show that Voltron fans remembered um, uh, how they thought it was, not actually how it was, because right. in reality, it was a shitty show, right? And it was like this convoluted thing where there was actually two different shows then one of them they that was completely different to the other. They had to pass it off as Voltron the second season or whatever. Just uh, how they made stuff in the '80s was kind of ridiculous and very right. cheap. Um, and so for, we wanted to make a, a a show for people how they thought it was, not how it actually was. Um, and that's like how a lot of nostalgia is for me when I go back and play something. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly how I remembered it. You know what I mean? Well, that's the and whole that's thing. Like, like I was yeah. like you. You go back and like I, I going back to the fight. I I loved Mortal Kombat. I loved Street Fighter too. But like yeah. for some reason, once I got older, like I, I just I lost the love for fighting games. I, for, I, I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense, right? Like I, yeah. I still love platformers, still love all this stuff. But like I don't know for some reason, I just I can't get back into. And me and you, we we were in. Who was it that put that that league on? Was it Danny Boy, who put on the? Uh, it was the like World a combat. I think, I think yeah. so. It, yeah. it, was, it was fun that we were all in the fighting like uh, bracket, but it wasn't. It just for some reason it was. We both got like carpal tunnel from playing the game, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, yeah. It was me versus Mooch, right? Yeah, and yeah, and so I beat him the first round and lost the next six rounds or something because my hand was so tired from beating him the first round. Yeah. So basically, that's a legit thing that happened. I mean, no, no lie. He whooped my ass for sure. I'm just saying no, that we're just um, getting there and we're just kind of like, you know, you, you get to a point after like whatever many matches we did, you're just like roundhousing each other to death. You know what I mean? It was like it was just getting I don't know, it, it seemed played out. Yeah. I'm amazed that that many people still like it and they're making money on a crap because it's not just Tekken, but you've got Injustice, Injustice 2. You've got uh, Killer Instinct. You guys are all, you know, a lot of people talk about how excited they are with Killer Instinct. And I think I have a lot of diehard Xbox fan, uh, fans on my friends list. I don't see anybody playing Killer Instinct. I'm sure they are. I don't see it. Well, that doesn't mean that people aren't playing it. It doesn't like, mean they're not playing yeah. it. Of course not. Yeah. There, I mean, there's there's obviously people playing it. Like, I love that game, but it's like there's so many more things to play right now. It's hard to really kind of justify going back That's and going, oh, well, let, let me, me play. Let me, let me put this out there, crap, and then we can change subjects if you want. The thing about uh, fighting games that I thought was a huge plus back in the day of what I'm talking about is when it was truly couch co-op, right? So I'm yeah. playing against you, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter 2. You're on the couch. We're sitting there. We're playing the game. And after you beat your buddy, you're like, yeah, you know, you're in his face. You're like, I beat your ass. You got beat. You got beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's the type of thing. Like, that's, that was fun. Now you're sitting there and you're playing somebody you might not even be talking to most times. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, eh, I, I, don't, I don't get the, the, the nostalgia is worn off on that game. Most yeah. of the people enjoy that sort of stuff. They're like in a, in a party chat with one another and they have 
multiple people lining up to f- kind of fight one another like you do yeah. like a virtual arcade essentially right. that's true uh, you know and that and that and you're able to watch the fight kind of kind of go down so you I mean i've been in parties with you know k mega and bam you know big fighter uh, type guys and if i have the game i'll hop in every once in a while and you know you know, go a couple rounds. <laughs> hey, some, it, so, someone in chat goes as mooch craps. Yes, man. Hell no. Just ask us about destiny <laughs> too, man. That's that's I, that's I just, wrote, I just yeah. wrote him. I said, you must not watch the show. Yeah. Welcome so, to I the mean, first show you're here at. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like yeah. we, we agree on some stuff, but we definitely don't agree on, on a lot of things specifically like, um, like call of duty black ops four, right? No campaign, but mooch is like, I love it. It's, I don't play the campaign anyway. And I'm like, Hey, well, they're ripping you off because they used to give you a campaign and now they're not. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely, there's diff there's differences of opinions there, but that's what makes it kind of fun. Uh, but we do happen to agree on something. Like Mooch isn't a big C of these fan. I am, right. but he'll play it and have fun. But he just does, yeah. you know, it's hashtag fun to him, and it's not something that's like. Yeah, I don't mind. It's like, it's, it's one of those things. Where you ever go to your buddy's like, hey, we're going to this club, right? And you're like, I yeah. don't like that club. But if all your friends are all going, you're like, going, yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a, it's a good time, right? Yeah. It's a good time. It's that that's Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is like yeah. if everybody's gonna go hang out and, and you you know everyone's drinking, having a good time, that's fine. We'll go, we'll go party there. We'll hang out. But like myself personally. Like I wouldn't just put on Sea of Thieves and and roam the seas. You know, that's yeah. just not my thing. Mo- Mooch is the type of guy that'll play Sea of Thieves, but he'll complain about it as as he's playing it. But occasionally have a good time and have a laugh. That is right? true. Like, that is true. It's Don, just how it's just how it is. It's not like you, that's the other thing too. Like sometimes games not necessarily your game doesn't mean you still can't have fun with it, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's where people like they let the pendulum swing too far when they hear these opinions like hey i hate all games or hate everything under this platform or that platform that's not what we're talking about right right um you know it's it, people are taking it out of context either you love or you hate something no it's that's not true right. there, there is a there's quite a bit of middle ground there for for a lot of gamers so yeah i hey, i agree 100 percent with that um so i want to talk a little bit about uh some sony fans actually started this petition uh, for Sony to allow EA access on PlayStation 4 because Xbox fans obviously been playing Madden all week, right? And I guess p- PC players can play too because they have a similar thing to EA access. So um, do you guys think that it's still odd that Sony hasn't caved in and allowed EA access, uh, you know, just as an option for people to be able to pay I'm if a, they want to play stuff? I'm yeah. amazed they haven't caved yet. Yeah, I don't like, know why. I, I don't. I don't even see how EA Access is in competition with PS Now. I don't get it. I don't see that either. Since you download the full games, right? Yeah, I don't. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. And I mean, I mean Microsoft. You can, you can prove right. it even more with Microsoft, right? They have the, uh, Game Pass, right? And yeah. they still have EA Access, and both are flourishing uh, yeah. on the platform. So, you know, what's what's the holdup, right? Yeah, exactly. I I don't I don't know. I, I think that it's it's super anti-consumer. The thing is, if Sony gets away with all this really anti-consumer stuff right now, and Microsoft would get shredded for it, and it's absolutely uh, one of the things that I will continue to point out, even um, at a slower point in time, like right now, um, where you know it is a little bit of slow slow down in the summer, but it does seem like Sony just gets away with doing whatever they want. Um, like here's the thing, right? Like I was able to play 10 hours of EA access of, of Madden. Now they let you play as much of that as you want. I mean, they cut off the single player thing at a certain point, but you can play online. Um, you can play the Mutt League. You can play uh, the franchise. You can do everything, which gives you enough time to 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 basically review the game, which I did. And this new Madden is is absolutely incredible. Like I am blown away by it. So basically, and you get your achievements and all your progress carries over. And like PS4 fans are like on the outside. They're that meme in the winter looking in, <laughs> right? Like in the cold because they don't get it, you know? And I understand why um, they feel that way. And I'm not angry at it. Like I, I know there's not a ton of signatures on this, but because most Sony fans are afraid to ask Sony for anything. They're afraid to admit that, hey, you know, there's there's a problem here. We would like this, and I think that's a bit of a a, a problem. What does uh, the Sony you know? fan do though? Like, he, genu- genuinely, like, mm. how do you get it through to Sony? This is something you want on <clears throat> on the platform that you invested in. Does he yeah. even know the solution? Because like, I, I always think those like little whatever. Let's all rally the troops and sign mm. some online forum. Doesn't do crap, right? It, like, let's yeah. just be genuine about it. But the question is, how do you get through to them to actually make changes like it would be nice is 
speak with community. your wallet. <laughs> yeah, well, well, but it's, that'd be nice if a game community can be heard without getting to the point where it's like bitching, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I would like to see that on both sides personally. So, I mean, does anyone know how to help Sony fans at this point? I well, no, I, I think petitions yeah. and all that's nonsense. If, if you yeah, exactly. want to Sony, you've got to do what the uproar, we all saw the uproar worked in 2013 with Microsoft. So you've got to write, you know, professionally to Sony uh, brass and say, this is how I feel. This is what we'd like. You need a lot of people. A lot of people have to write. Yeah. The petition mm. thing is like, so it's, like, I hear and, petition and, and I, <laughs> I think of the 1920s. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, who cares? Like, We're going to petition you for this, yeah. this, or this, right? Uh, yeah. How long have Sony fans been asking to change their damn IDs and it still, still has not happened. Like, come on. Well, One of these all, days, right? That has to happen, I'm sure. Well, and all these things, are you, you can't just say, well, just, you know, vote with your wallet. Well, there's no way to vote for your wallet on these. No, you no. can't. Like, there really isn't. So, like, how do you, I mean, I'm actually complex. Like, what do you do? And then you have a fan base that won't say anything, like Kraft's been saying, um, you know, when maybe secretly they're not the most happiest about something. They just kind of, like, don't say anything. Well, you know, how is that helping you? Like, I, I think there's a respectful way to do it. I think we can get to a place where, there's mutual benefit from the gamer side of things and in, in the platform provider. Um, and I just don't even know how to approach it with Sony. At least Microsoft's got forums and they can be voted up or whatever it may be. Uh, they can actually get some sort of traction, but with Sony fans, I don't even know what you do. Yeah. There's not really much you can do because they act like everything's fine. You know what I mean? Hey, everything's perfect. They have it's to voice great. their opinion on social media. That's the only way, Don, because like you say, you, it's not usually uh Noof's, uh comment would be right. You vote with your wallet, but there is no, what do you know? Everybody's just, everybody on PlayStation is not going to buy Madden. Like that's how you're going to voice your opinion. Like, <laughs> yeah. Or, or not not buy Madden. Doesn't have it. You mean right. like, you mean, how do you do it? Right. It doesn't hold water. So the only way to do it is, is, is like I say, professionally, uh, you write the Sony brass and say that we, you know, enough's enough. We we see what PS Now is. We either are uh, subscribed to it or we don't. Hey, King no Crash Gaming, I'm curious. What facts are you spitting? What does Microsoft need to get better? They've already listened. Uh, we've got the most powerful console, yeah. the best online. They've given us the Elite Controller. They bought five new studios and they're buying more. Uh, all these studios are working on Xbox games. You have... Um, them reinvesting they've already announced that they're going to come out with another new console they're the most consumer friendly uh console console maker too. Out. yeah they're giving you all the options you could possibly want they've given us backwards compatibility yeah, backwards yeah, compatibility with the xbox 360 and xbox one game pass they're literally putting all their exclusives and allowing you to play that for 10 bucks a month right like that to me well who else is doing that how is that not good i'm, I'm confused yeah. as to why that isn't good um, yes, the X did come from Phil Spencer. I know you can sit there and listen to the, uh, the alternate facts about that. Yes. Don Matrick and them were like, Hey, we got to do another console, but this was Phil's console. He was the one that was like, Hey, let's build this 4k machine. Right? There's a certain point in leadership where the baton is passed. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, you know, absolutely. people do make moves, but there's a certain point where the baton is passed and things may take a different direction. So yeah. Phil is 100% kind of re steered the direction of where they're going to go with the X. Because they, they admitted they were going to have something very similar to the Pro yeah. uh, in, initially. And they were looking, and it, all, it was all stemming from, like, the old systems are long in the tooth. They needed to move on, but the technology wasn't getting cheap enough for them to do what they really wanted to do. So we got what we got on the PlayStation 4, and we got what we got on the Xbox One X. And as we as we move forward, they were looking at the next iteration that would make logical sense was the, uh, you know, what what the Pro ended up in the beam. But then they took it a step further and said, okay, well, technology has changed, and there's these other factors. So let's you know, let's take it something that's tangible for our customers, which was basically taking your existing games and make it so the developers, if they wanted to, make a 4K and take some of the other advantages by having more powerful hardware in there. So, uh, RJ is, Gabriel uh, says, I'm more concerned with Sony fans who would support EA. All they want is money. All Sony want is money. All Microsoft, they are all businesses. Who wouldn't want the option? Sony is the one that's saying, hey, you don't deserve the option as a consumer. To say I would like to play EA pay for EA access, it's it's absolutely 
Right. 100% ludicrous that they don't allow that. They made that decision for you. They said, hey, Sony fans don't want to play pay for EA access. It's not a value. I don't see how it's not or give the people an actual op option to do that and see if they want to themselves, right? Like maybe they want it, maybe they don't. I'm not a big Game Pass guy, but hey, it's an extra option that people can pay for if they want to, right? And I have it till next year. I'm still going to buy my games because I prefer to buy my games, but I can see the type of person that that's really appealing to, right? The person that maybe went to PS4 from 360 and don't have any Xbox One games and want a full catalog right away. Well, you come over, you buy that X, you drop your 10 bucks, you got 200 games, right? So that's that's where that comes in, and I get it. And same thing with EA Access. Honestly, think about this, right? Let's just say you buy an X, you spent this whole generation on PS4, and you want some games. You drop down 15 bucks uh, right away for EA Access and for uh, Game Pass. You've got access to like 250, 260 games that you can download and play. Who, where else can you do that? You can't do that on any console or, or PC. I'm sorry. You just cannot do it. I don't think any gamer should let another gamer dictate what they want or don't want. Right? Like, that's from a real basic level. You want a game? You want a game. You want a service? You want a service, right? Yeah. And, and the, I don't think this is not a, like a Sony Microsoft thing. It's just you as a gamer. If, if you want it, you want it. If you don't want it, that's cool. There's nothing wrong yeah. with it. If you don't want EA access, that's fine. But I mean, there are people that do want it, and and I'm a big fan of even if it's something I personally don't want for myself, right? Doesn't mean I can't root for other people for a type of game or a type of service that they personally want for them, what what works out for them. So, you know, I, I think Sony fans should maybe team together for the people that do want it on the Sony platform, and just stick up for their fellow gamer in, in that perspective. And at the end of the day, here's the thing. Sony will do better with it. Sony will make more money. The The platform that you prefer is going to do better if they actually have the service. So, I mean, I, I don't see anyone losing from just saying, hey, this is a new way of things are going. Let's support the people that want that sort of thing. And it doesn't threaten traditional games in any sort of way or Sony's services. It just simply doesn't. I mean, the if you look at what's happened on the Microsoft side, things i mean i mean there's your test sample of how it all works yeah 100 percent. um i kind of just wanted to talk about uh let's see what did i want to talk about here i wanted to talk about oh this uh reaver industries thing um remember we talked about that last week mooch and people yeah. were like oh what is this is this something to do with fable uh it turns out it's not anything to do with fable or video games at all it's just some thing that this this company named themselves um and they say it has nothing to do with fable and some people took that as meaning that fable wasn't coming which yeah. th that's not, has nothing to do with that actually no. so i just wanted to kind of clarify that because people are like oh um what happened to that crap you guys said that the fable was coming like look that was the rumor of the day <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like when they come out and tweet the next day or a couple days later um, you know, that that's not the case and how, you know, that's not really our fault, you know? It is interesting though. You know, I've been thinking about this more and more cause you've brought it up. Uh, you said it in videos and I mean, Don, you'll get a kick out of this. Like yeah. I, I would say it's 95%, but it's interesting. You know, people have been trying to get Phil to even break a little and say something like even during E3, somebody was yelling, like, I don't know if it was Southbound or who it was, so it was like Fable, you know, like when Playground came out and the, and it was like, they aren't breaking on this. And I'm wondering, do is there anyone that thinks that maybe Fable's not being made? No. It is Fable, a new IP? Fable's getting made 100%. That's, How, where's yeah. your, what's the well, evidence? From, from, from my sources, yeah, it's 100% being made. Yeah. Okay, do you have any evidence? Like anything? Even well, if it's no, not that I'm going to be able to project or just out yeah. somebody out. You know, Euro, no. Eurogamer also did that. And also a former Lionhead Studios employee right. said... Uh, it's definitely getting made. Okay. So well, there I mean, you go. Like, that's, yeah, that's I mean, something. It, 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 yeah, it's, it's the chicken suits, Mooch. The chicken suits. The chicken suits. Um, yes, take that. Yeah, I mean, right, let's roll. With that. Let's, <laughs> let's roll with that. The seasons are changing in Forza. <laughs> Dude, the seasons are going to change in in Fable. Like, lock it in. Of course, right let's, now. Let's yeah. let's put it this way: If Playground Games is not making Fable, what are they making? Well, yeah. here, listen. It's a win-win. Yeah. Right. So if it's Fable, you win. If it's a new IP, shit, we've been wanting a new IP forever. And with the pedigree they got, you win. 
It's a uh, well. Here, here's the thing, right? And and we've kind yeah. of heard this story before. As I wrap up, um, they were making a new uh, open world game, and they and it said on their site, making a brand new open world uh, IP, whatever, right? And then they changed the new to exciting uh, on their site. So it's it's Ooh. definitely Fable, and uh, I'm excited for it. I can't. I wonder when they're gonna announce it. I'm not really sure uh, when they will, but I, I'm I'm excited about it. What about you, Noof? Boom, boom, kaboom. Are you excited for Fable? Boom. Yeah, baby. I'm totally excited. I love Fable, man. Fable is an amazing franchise, and it's been missing so long. You know, it's really sad that that one they were making doesn't didn't see the light of day. It was so close, and it actually looked pretty good, minus that whole one versus four whatever connect connection yeah they want they chased the trend there noof you know you what know. i mean that's unfortunate when you chase a trend like that um but to me to me fable has always been to me it's been xbox's version of like legend of zelda it's like the closest thing i think we've had from like a microsoft studio per se it's got and it's had that charm it's got that vigor it was easy to get into and play for hours uh, it didn't have problems sure did it live up to everybody's expectations at the start i think things were pretty lofty back in the day i don't even think the xbox hardware when the first fable games came out was uh, was even capable of some of the ambitions that Lionhead had set out for the franchise. But I think that now we have an amazing console and even better one upcoming, I'm sure. Um, there's a lot of places this franchise can go. I'd like to see him toy a little bit with... Um, you know, a little bit of that humor, but a little bit maybe say a little more grit, a little more realism, that yes, sort of thing. thank um, you. You know, they got to ride the fine line because the first thing you do, if they go all stylized and it's full of like sort of you know, teenage fart jokes and stuff. Yeah, you know, we're, yeah we're gonna get <laughs> shit all over again. Hey, you guys got nothing but cartoon games. Shit, you know, crap. Exactly. It won't be great. <laughs> it, it won't yeah. be great. Yeah, they, I, I don't know. I don't think they had fart jokes in the first. It was like that it, British humor. They gotta darken it up, and yeah. and they can do the British humor, but you know, sprinkle a little U.S. humor in there too. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, with that, we flew past two hours. Hey, now. Which, what, what do you got going on? I know what? we got MNC yes. evenings tomorrow, so MNC. that's exciting. Woo. On my channel, then we've got Crossfire. I've got a, a special guest on this week. You guys are gonna love it. Repeat guest. Um, definitely, he's in the gaming industry. He was supposed to come on two weeks ago, but he had something come up. But he did reschedule with me. He will be here this Friday. He guaranteed it tonight. Uh, looking forward to that. And then, uh, you know, hey, gaming all weekend, dude. I might, you know, I, I really do want to pick up streaming again. Not religiously, once yeah. a week. Just have everybody kind of uh, enjoy all the good times that we have after podcasting hours, a little uh, after hours uh, chilling and, and, and gaming. So mm -hmm. that's where you can find me, guys, the Mooch78 on YouTube. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Noof, what do you got going on, man? Well, first, I want to say thank you guys for having me back as a guest on Xbox Nation. I always love hanging out with you dudes for a couple of hours and chatting about the latest gaming topics. Always good to hang out with the Don as well. And hopefully we'll get to uh, uh, hang out on one of the ships and see a thieves here pretty soon. As far as what I got going on, well, a little bit less than I used to. Mixing up with Noof, as you guys might know, uh, is basically put on a permanent hiatus for a while. Maybe I'll bring him back in the future. Uh, our other partner, Crime, who started this. Salty's Gaming, as you know, following MNC Evenings tomorrow night, I will be with him on the Salty's Gaming Podcast, so check that out, following Mooch and Crap and Company, that's going to be good, and that reminds me, I kind of get myself a Mooch and Crap Evenings fucking mug now, because I still have the morning <laughs> one, so uh, yeah, instead of eating bacon in the morning and drinking my coffee, I'm going to have a burger and chow down with a coffee instead. So Absolutely, um, and hit that like button, guys, so we can uh, appreciate it, uh, and the Don, thank you for joining us, even though you're a little bit late, uh, what do you you got going on man uh not much uh best way to follow what i'm doing is follow me on twitter which is the dawn underscore ktr um most likely to be on next podcast this saturday so definitely if you want more of the dawn that's the best place to see me there and then uh if you want to see me on another podcast then, you know just follow me on twitter and you'll you'll see where, where i end up so episode 100.1 right that's what this week's episode is right yes uh no we finally made over 100 i think that was last last week Hey, <laughs> yeah, we did. Hey, 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 hey uh, Mooch, yeah. uh, <laughs> check I, out the Scarlet I just, League. I just did. I want to say shout out to Jamie Moran for yeah. the best Scarlett Johansson gift yet. Uh, if you haven't noticed, he, he posts these like they, they're almost like crap gamer style. I hope uh, he never titles. stops. Yeah, he's always like, um, it, it blew me away. This is unbelievable. Who saw this coming? Scarlet League. <laughs> Scarlet <laughs> like, League. It's, it's like, I get it. It's, it's funny as hell, though. That is a great league. 
hit the like button guys thanks for coming we're gonna do mnc evenings tomorrow on mooch's channel have a great night we'll catch you guys next time peace out